Good morning, Honorable Hadebe. How are you? I am good. And how are you? I'm good, my brother. Thank you. Welcome. You can complete the sentence. <laughs> 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 Thank you very much. <laughs> Welcome, Honorable DM Gadimeng, to our portfolio committee. It feels good to be, <laughs> to be referring to you as Honorable Member. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Is it sunk in though? Not or yet. Processing it. I'm processing it. I'm actually suffering from withdrawal symptoms. <laughs> I can imagine. I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. How, how many years have you spent in Pulukwan municipality? Seven years, four, yeah. five months. No, it can't be easy. Yeah, no, it can't be easy. I but miss them already. Not that you are bad people, but yeah. <laughs> I miss them. I miss at them. Least, at least you're no longer at the receiving end now. <laughs> well, it's the same, I guess. <laughs> been much broader, so yeah. <laughs> it never ends. Yeah, no, no. And no, congratulations and all the best when on your appointment. Thank you, my dear. Well deserved one. Thank you, my dear. I thought I should take a moment. Before the chairperson uh, 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 connects and start the meetings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Thank you. Thank you. No, 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 no. Sure.
Good morning, colleagues. Good morning, Chair. Yes. Welcome, all of you. I just want to quickly deal with the... <clears throat> morning, Chair. Good morning, Honorable Butelezi. You are here in the meeting. I want to confirm your attendance, confirm the attendance of Honorable Mkalipi, attendance of Honorable Hadewe, uh, confirm the attendance of Honorable Spice, Honorable Pumza, Honorable Kurnevald, Honorable Kleza, Honorable Brink, are you here? Did I skip you? The apology that I have is that Honorable Brink and Spice are going to leave the meeting at 10 to attend caucus. Same with Honorable Hadewe and Honorable Direko. They are going to leave at 10 to attend the meetings. Their caucuses and then Honorable Honebad would love to be excused at 11 to also attend the caucus meeting. But let me quickly deal with the apologies. Mm, then I'll acknowledge our guests that are here. Mm, the apologies that I'm having today, it's Honorable Kaba who's still on sick leave. Then Honorable Go on sick leave. Honorable Minister, she is committed somewhere. Honorable Deputy Minister will have to leave at 12 30. Uh, Deputy Minister Nkadimen was still coming to that item as well. Then Honorable Deputy Minister Mapela is going to it's not in today. The DG is committed, departmental commitments. And then uh, Mr. Temba Fossi will, uh, will, 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 will then uh, represent the, the delegation. The AG team won't be able to attend because they are busy auditing departmental annual reports. Yes, those are the apologies that I have. And then uh, the COO of Salga will also like to be excused if the meeting is not concluded by that time. Don't worry, we'll have concluded the meeting by then. Then I want to welcome uh, the MEC of Cocta in the province, welcome also the MEC for Finance, MEC Mvoko is here in our midst to welcome also the DG, the HOD, Eastern Cape is in our midst. I want to welcome all of you. Also then to welcome the leadership of Sarah Badman District led by a Executive Mayor Councillor Kekana. Also to welcome Salga, uh, led by Councillor Stofile. We have also have Councillor Koyo, the provincial chairperson, and Councillor Janda, who's the PEC member, including Councillor Beef and here, the, who's also Salga, is then KPEC member. Then we have uh, the COO, Mr. Joel, and Sona with the PDO. We want to welcome you as well. Uh, the delegation of Dr. Beas Nodi is led by Councillor Dion DeForce, who's the mayor. And then we have the MM in our means, the acting CFO, and the director of information, and the chief audit executive is here, including the chairperson of MPEC. Then we are starting this meeting today with good and bad news. Uh, I think let me start with the good news because the good news started before the bad news. The good news is that we have a new deputy minister in our midst in the name of DM, deputy minister. 
Tembinga Dime. So as this committee, we want to congratulate you on your new responsibilities. And we know you are going to execute your responsibilities. We've seen you taking the oath, saying that you are going to make sure that uh, this district development model become a reality. So we want to congratulate you as a committee on your appointment. We want to wish you well in your endeavors. Congratulations, DM Mukadimeni. Uh, you are welcome to the meeting as our DM. Then the bad news. Can we see it? Can we see it? You want to see it? Yes, we're very excited to have her in our midst. Thank, thank you, Chair. And thank you, all the members. Okay. They can see the DM. They wanted to see the Congratulations, DM. DM. At least you know us here in this committee. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know you very well. <laughs> yeah, congratulations, Bogoto. Thank you very much. Thank you very We've much. Also Chair. seen your walk in black. Mm. You are about mm. to be thrown in. Mm. Thank <laughs> you. Next to this former speaker. <laughs> well, okay. Can we progress now? She's here. She's with us, and she knows the committee. It's fine. Welcome, DM Nkadime. Uh, then, at the same time, uh, I should think over the weekend, it was a shock and sorrow that is also as a committee, we then learned that uh, and received the bad news that uh, the CEO of Salga's wife, Mrs. Wungiwe George, passed on. And I think as this committee, we need to say this, uh, uh, Councillor Stofile and uh, leading the Salga delegation, including you, CEO, COO, Mr. Joel, that as a committee, our hearts and hands want to reach out to the CEO and his entire family. And as this committee, we both know that losing a wife, if one can say that it's a life partner, it's beyond cruel. And we can imagine how trying this is it for, for Mr. George as was speaking. And then as a committee, we're again, reaching out to offer our love and support to the CEO, including his family and the entire Salga family. So can you then kindly receive our heartfelt condolences as the portfolio committee. We'll be sending a condolence note that you will personally hand over to to the CEO as you visit him during the day. So we want to convey our heartfelt condolences to our CEO, Mr. George, and his entire family, including the Salga community. Having said that, can we just take a a, a minute moment of silence in honor of Mrs. Ms. Wongiwe, George colleagues. May her yeah, beautiful soul continue to rest in peace. Thank you, colleagues. Having said that, today's meeting, you'll recall, colleagues. Recording in progress. The 1st of June, 20 it was scheduled for the 1st of June, 2021, when the committee met with the municipalities in Sarah Batman district. And then you'll recall that 
uh, Dr. Bayes Nodi local municipality was not part of the engagement because it was hosting a technical team, task team uh, that was deployed by the South African Local Government Association to help the municipality out of its quagmire. We agreed to defer the engagement to allow the task team space to develop its detailed support plan for the municipality. The team should now be in a position to update this committee on the progress that they've made thus far. During our last meeting with the municipality on the 19th of August, 2020, we then expressed our concerns around the municipality's consecutive disclaimed audit opinions 2018, 19, 2017, 18, and 2016, 17 financial years. Though the municipality has improved to a qualified audit opinion in 2019, 20 financial year, this is not the standard of the excellence we can proudly celebrate. We have also been noting that since its inception during the 2016 demarcation cycle, the municipality has been under increasing financial pressure and there's realize continuous financial losses. We also understand that the municipality is a casualty of a poorly managed demarcation process. However, the AG has indicated that there, there were also limited or no assurance that the municipal manager, the mayor and the audit committee, the internal audit unit, and the Municipal Council and the Municipal Public Accounts Committee. And then the AG has been of the view that intervention was required to improve the status of the municipality's internal control drivers. The other issue that the AG has pointed out is that intervention was also required in respect of the key risk areas such as the quality of submitted financial statements, including performance information, supply chain management, information technology, and human resource management. And the AG is of the view that the root causes of these weaknesses has actually been attributed to a lack of compliance monitoring tools, lack of records management that is efficient and organized, including lack of consequence management for poor performance and transgression, as well as uh, the lack of filling in the key uh, vacancies that are there. While we also agree that the municipality's amalgamation processes could have been handled better, we foresee no drastic imp improvement in the municipality state of governance unless all the key role players provide the required levels of assurance unless we pay attention to the internal control drivers and risk areas as well as we address the root causes as the issues that we like to see the municipality speaking in greater details. Having said that, I should think let me allow both the two MECs from the province to, to say something before we receive the, 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 the presentation. I'll allow the MEC for Cocta, MEC Toli Lengata to be the first one to start. Then he will be followed by a MEC for Finance, MEC Mboko. Then we'll go straight to Salga presentation then it will be the municipality itself. But if it's a joint presentation, we are amenable to that as well. Over to you, MEC, for Cocta in the province. Thank you, uh, Honorable Chair. Good morning to you. Good morning to honorable members, uh, the minister, the deputy minister. Uh, congratulations uh, to Deputy Minister Ngad Meng for her appointment and looking forward. Uh, to working with her and to getting the support that we need as, uh, as provinces. And um, greetings to the leadership of uh, Salga, uh, my colleague, Amusim Voko, uh, HODs that are here, 
uh, the DG and DGs uh, that are present, uh, good morning. Uh, thanks, uh, Honorable Chair, for this opportunity. And uh, we, we were looking forward uh, to the presentation uh, for any you know, breakthrough that is likely to emerge out of the processes uh, you know, in uh, um, Bayas Node municipality will help us in a way, uh, even though the challenges of municipalities are not exactly the same, uh, but we're hoping to draw some lessons uh, in attending to some of the challenges that are confronting other municipalities uh, in the province. And um, on, uh, on that point, Honorable Chair, to just appreciate the opportunity that the committee has uh, once again afforded us uh, to appear before the committee. And thanks very much, Honorable Chair. Thank you so much, MEC Matia. MEC Mvoko. Uh, good morning, Honorable Chair, and uh, good morning to the Honorable Members. Uh, my colleague, MEC Ngata, and congratulations to the Deputy Minister and welcome. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Chair. The, I have taken note of the comments you made regarding the, the amalgamation that didn't go well. Fortunately, at that point in time, I was closer to Bayas Nodier than, than what I am today. Uh, it is one of those um, issues that will haunt us for a long time to come if the situation in Bayas Nodier is not um, uh, uh, corrected. They need all the support. And I think from the side of provincial treasury, we have continuously engaged with them to try and uh, assist them in some of the other areas where there are serious challenges. Uh, so thank you very much, uh, uh, Honorable Chairperson, and I appreciate being invited into this meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Councillor Stofile, I would like you to be the one that take the lead on this matters now. Over to you, Sarga. Uh, thank you very much, Chair, and uh, greetings to the committee. Uh, mm -hmm. the How so are we? We are talking to the right person. Can we see you? <laughs> we want to be sure. You want to be sure, Chair? Yes. Uh, let me try to do this thing properly. Uh, I think you can see me now, Chair. You are yeah. talking to the right person, uh, not in, from the Bundus. Um, thank you very much, Chair, but and thank you for the, for the Where have you gone to now? To you are not from the Bundus like me, but where have you gone to? Because you came in and disappeared. We want to see you throw out a presentation. You must learn from the DM and the two uh, MECs. They've been very visible. Yes, no. The problem is problem of network. I know people that are living in Bundus, they are always struggling with networks. So thank you, thank you very much once again uh, to the committee and uh, two MECs that are here. And um, uh, at DM, uh, newly appointed uh, deputy minister. Yes, indeed, we really take uh, kind of your word on the situation that the association is facing, wherein we have lost, um, I mean, the CEO have lost one of uh, his pillar of strength, and we are really undergoing a serious strain as an organization. However, we've got a responsibility to shoulder on and move on with the responsibilities that are given to us. And that is why we uh, decided to honor uh, this long outstanding appointment with the committee to share some thoughts and views uh, with regard to what is happening in local government sphere. Uh, I think you are going to get a presentation from us today, Chair, uh, on the basis uh, of the feedback on our request that we have made uh, with regard to Dr. Bias Nodier. Uh, our understanding of the situation, always we coin it as uh, deciding to put grave sites together with the hope that there will be solutions out of the grave sites, whereas don't, we don't give a sufficient support in making sure that those grave sites are tend to be a better site to, for living uh, by human beings and communities that are seeking to render service to them. 
And um, of course, over the last couple of days, we have uh, interaction with the MEC in the Eastern Cape. We're really uh, thankful uh, for the enthusiasm and the open frankness uh, from the Department of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, including uh, Treasury in that, in that province. Uh, in facing and uh, dealing with the challenges that uh, Dr. Bias Nodia is facing today. You'll get an example, Chair, for instance, of the project gone wrong uh, in Dr. Bias Nodia, for instance, where today that municipality is facing to pay a huge amount of money on the basis of a case, a case that is referred to be a kiss case, uh, which, it was, which it took place even before the amalgamated situation the municipality is facing. And you'll get some details of our thoughts uh, about what we have picked up and what we are suggesting and what our interaction between ourselves and the Department of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs uh, in that province of the Eastern Cape. In fact, you'll get um, how could you better manage and better deal with matters that are affecting municipalities such as Dr. Bias Nodier, including matters pertaining to those amalgamated municipalities that are facing difficulties uh, today as we sit here and have this conversation. And of course, you'll get some our view in terms of how do we then work together uh, as government responsible to render service to our communities and how do we partner and making sure that we turn things around in the municipal space so that communities at the end of the day, they do get what they voted for uh, in terms of service, in terms of leadership, in terms of at least guaranteed future uh, that we have promised them too. Uh, and then that, that's what we are going to get in our, in our perspective insofar as the work that we've done and in, in Dr. Bersnod here. Once again, thank you very much. And uh, we really appreciate the opportunity given to us. And we are looking forward to partner for a lasting solution on the challenges that are faced by local government sector in South Africa. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Chancellor Stofile. Over to you, Mr. COO, Mr. Joel. Well, well, thank you very much, um, Jefferson, and uh, also greetings to yourself um, and honorable members of the Portfolio Committee, the Deputy Minister of Cooperative Governance and the MSCs uh, for COCTA and uh, Treasury, respectively, from the Eastern Cape Province, the, the Salga leadership, as well as the leadership from the municipality, and uh, colleagues from COCTA nationally, provincially, and, and from within SALG, um, as, as, well the, as well as other participants. Well, Chairperson, again, we would want to uh, start by expressing our um, appreciation that the, co the, the committee thought it prudent to give us an opportunity to interact uh, with the Dr. Bayes Nodia municipality as SALGA. Uh, with a view to see to what extent we can be as an association of municipalities be of assistance through direct support in the form of uh, multidisciplinary support to, to this municipality. And, and so the, the background that I will briefly sketch, uh, Honorable Chairperson, which I'm sure the municipality will provide much more detail on is that we are seized with a municipality that is the creation of the former Kamdebo, Ikwezi, and Bavians local municipalities, and uh, together created this new monster of a municipality uh, following the 2016 elections. And uh, when you look at the makeup of these three municipalities jointly, it is almost half of the district municipality itself. So a single municipality makes up nearly half of the district. And, and whilst there is a low population level in the, across the municipality, uh, it cuts across a very huge land space. 
Um, also, the reality is that uh, people are sparsely populated across the municipalities, uh, and we have this unfortunate reality that that the amalgamation process has merged three small municipalities with a very limited rate space, um, and uh, even becoming more financially unviable. And we now also have the 27 councillors that find expression uh, across this 28.6 thousand uh, square kilometers, uh, having to cover uh, much more ground that you would find uh, in other municipalities across the country. But also an important point that we would want to make is that when one looks at Treasury's financial distress cause, it shows that there has been no improvement uh, or change in the state financial status of this municipality pre and post the, the amalgamation. And when you look at the financial position of this municipality, Chairperson, as at merger, so when we hit 3 August 2016, this is what Dr. Bayes Nodia inherited, uh, debt across uh, these different role players and uh, totaling 65 million rands and that is that is a, that is as at the date of amalgamation the picture unfortunately has become worse uh, since then and then we will highlight why it, that is the case if we compare the pre to post amalgamation audit outcomes picture you can see uh, pre the amalgamation in uh, in 2016 we we had uh, two of the municipalities, Kamdubu and Bavians, being fairly stable from a financial management point of view. But we unfortunately had one municipality in Ikwezi that has shown that uh, it has not been able to manage uh, its finances. And that as a consequence, uh, Chairperson, sees what happens post the amalgamation. So the first three years of the amalgamation, uh, this municipality has found itself in serious financial difficulties and has seen disclaimers. And only in the last audited year, being the 1920 financial year, did they achieve a qualified uh, audit outcome. And uh, our engagement shows that uh, there is a lot that has been done both politically and administratively to move this municipality towards a qualified and uh, indications are that they are well on track to really improve their audit outcomes uh, going forward. Now, what has happened, Chaperson, is that uh, at the time when the municipality was indeed <clears throat> Uh, invited together with the district uh, to the portfolio committee. We had already set up time to meet with this municipality. So the executive uh, committee of the municipality, uh, there being an executive uh, system, the executive committee met with the Salga delegation at the political level. Uh, to discuss the issues around the amalgamation, the water crisis, the, the challenges around electricity distribution with a focus on the debts owed to ESCOM. And then lastly, also the court cases that Councillor Stofile has referred to and its impact on this municipality. Ultimately, it was agreed that it would be necessary for these challenges to be unpacked and that a related program of action should be developed um, to assist this municipality going forward. So we have met at a technical level, we have impacted these issues, and there is a draft program of action that was uh, that was developed in the uh, first of June. But there are four challenges, uh, Chair, that I had highlighted in an earlier slide that this municipality is, is seized with. And, and when one unpacks the key challenges, uh, let's start with the amalgamation. What has become evident in the short time that we had spent with this municipality 
is that the, a report that was developed prior to the amalgamation itself confirmed that there is no evidence that the amalgamation will make this municipality, this newly established municipality, viable. Um, secondly, that uh, despite the fact that the intention was to create a, a financially viable municipality, that has to date not materialized as this municipality is continue to have uh, financial constraints. Uh, the third area is that whilst as part of the amalgamation processes, uh, transition committees, management committees at both a, net, a political and a technical level um, uh, have been created. They have just not been functional. And therefore, the anticipated processes to ensure a successful amalgamation could not be unfolded uh, because of those uh, weaknesses. What has also become uh, clear is that whilst at the point of amalgamation, one could determine the debt that has been inherited by this municipality, it, was, it became fairly evident thereafter that there were a number of liabilities and assets that were not disclosed by the former municipalities. And those have brought on huge financial burdens to this municipality. And whilst this municipality, Chairperson, what baffles us is that whilst this municipality has 27 councillors, only the mayor and the speaker are serving in a full time capacity. So a municipality that makes up almost half of the district, uh, just under 30,000 square kilometers, only has a mayor that is full-time and a speaker that is full-time. So the day-to-day -day running politically uh, is done by a single person uh, as the mayor, uh, whereas the speaker has really a different role from an oversight uh, point of view. So, so these have all contributed the chairperson to the current state of this municipality uh, post amalgamation. On the electricity space, um, the municipality continues to experience funding constraints, particularly around uh, uh, implementing capital projects. Uh, there is continued vandalism and theft um, uh, on, on the infrastructure. The electricity collection from a revenue point of view is sitting at 70%. Uh, Jefferson, and we are seeing them sitting with 161 million owed to ESCOM for bulk electricity. So, so they find themselves in a in a hole, in a very difficult space, uh, and there is much to be done to a system uh, around playing that electricity distribution role. On the water and sanitation space, um, they have been hit by a drought which has impacted on, uh, on the water delivery across the municipality, as well as the quality of water. They are currently having a daily shortfall uh, of 4.2 milliliters. Uh, uh, so therefore, uh, they are constantly um, on a, a go slow from the extension of water services to uh, its communities. The bylaws themselves, are outdated and need to be revisited. The water the master plan needs to be, be, be revisited. The aging infrastructure needs to be looked into. And then similar to the electricity distribution space, there is lots of vandalism and uh, um, uh, on, the, on the infrastructure. On the legal front, the litigation registers sitting currently with 40, 41 cases. 11 of them uh, on the assessment done uh, by, the, by the team shows that they will have uh, financial implications for this municipality. And a majority of these cases, uh, Jefferson, is coming from the former municipalities. Uh, so it is what cases that this newly established municipality has inherited. The, the uh, if you look at the financial statements for the 1920 financial year, they have spent on legal costs 1.8 million. A small municipality having spent just under 2 million on legal costs. 
to try and defend uh, these uh, matters that they have inherited. And as Councillor Stoffele has indicated, there is one matter uh, that has become very pronounced. It is a matter that uh, was inherited from the former Equation Municipality and the judgment uh, uh, that uh, was pronounced in April this year um, is uh, uh, against the municipality to the tune of 3.9 million rands. In fact, it is a few rands short of 4.4 million rands on one legal case where damages have to be paid uh, by this municipality uh, as a direct consequence of what has happened prior to the amalgamation itself. And there are similar matters that this municipality has to has to deal with. So when we look at assisting this municipality, the, the program of action that we have developed, which we, we will share uh, with the committee, is that we will provide support across the four functional areas, uh, water and sanitation, energy and electricity, waste management, and around key aspects of the amalgamation. And then finance and legal matters will find expression across all of these four functional areas. So we would look at what the financial implications are on the water and sanitation space, energy and electricity space, and the waste management space. And similarly, what legal issues are emerging out of each of those functional areas. When we look at anticipated outcomes, once we have executed the program of uh, support uh, to this municipality. We are anticipating uh, four key outcomes around the amalgamation is firstly, an understanding of what is the rationale and what was the rationale behind the amalgamation process, because clearly what was intended has, uh, has not been delivered. Uh, secondly, we need to look at what remains outstanding to ensure that the amalgamation processes are duly finalized so that this municipality can then move on uh, as a newly established municipality. The third area is to look at what has been the cost linked to the amalgamation itself and whether there has been appropriate funding uh, given to this municipality to cover the cost of the amalgamation and the cost person on the face value is huge and it's an excess of, uh, of 20 million. And then lastly, Chairperson, going forward, we would want to also use this to prepare ourselves uh, as the MDB is going to embark on a process to redetermine municipal boundaries post the uh, upcoming local government elections so that we can go into that process and uh, and um, uh, perhaps um, sober up the the MDB on the impact of the decisions that they are making with regards to municipal uh, boundary redetermination uh, and areas that they are not considering when those decisions are made uh, using the Dr. Bayesian of the example um, um, to perhaps try and avoid similar instances going forward. And as I said, Finance and legal will find expression across across the areas. On the water and sanitation uh, uh, um, function, we would want to make the municipality executing that function uh, more sustainable. We also want to look at appropriate funding mechanisms, particularly to focus on the infrastructure uh, improvements. We would also spend time with a view to ensure that we have updated the bylaws uh, and uh, all related matters, but also perhaps spend a bit more time around enforcement mechanisms to be introduced so that the bylaws themselves can be living documents and in fact could, use the, could be used by the municipality to deliver the function on a more sustainable basis. Also, what we would want to do is create platforms for knowledge sharing about areas so that this municipality could also learn from other municipalities, but also vice versa on how to deal with uh, drought related issues. Uh, and then we would also uh, look at the, uh, the master plan for water uh, and also focus on 
operations and maintenance uh, plans uh, to ensure that the, the delivery of the service is more sustainable. Similarly, on the energy and electricity front, whilst yes, there would be a focus to reduce the ESCOM debt, but also perhaps as uh, the municipality has a solid case for a counterclaim uh, against ESCOM um, for the use of its infrastructure, we will also be looking at uh, imp improving the institutional delivery mechanisms. Um, uh, uh, similarly, look at improving the bylaws and the enforcement, uh, and then also ensure that there's there's a proper running of the electricity business as as a business uh, that brings in money for the for the and revenue for the municipality to then cross up so that other services would in the municipality. On the waste management front, again, we would be looking at uh, exploring uh, uh, funding mechanisms, uh, also run the waste management as a business. So, so across all of the three areas, the, the, the trading services areas, electricity, water, waste management, what we intend doing, uh, Chairperson, is to do a proper assessment on whether the municipality is properly structured to execute each of those functions. Are they properly capacitated to execute those functions as a business uh, with a solid revenue stream that could then be used uh, to cross subsidize uh, all other all other uh, uh, non non revenue uh, services. So towards, as we are marching towards the implementation of the program of action, Jefferson, we have made some good strides at a technical level. We have engaged, we have finalized it. We've also sought approval at a political level. And uh, last week, the full council met and uh, formally approved the program of action. We are now in the, in the space of engaging stakeholders to partner with us in the execution of this program. And we are quite excited, uh, Chairperson, as earlier indicated, we have already had the benefit of meeting with the MEC of COCTA and the COCTA team at the provincial level. And we're excited to say that uh, there is agreement that we must jointly look at, uh, at, 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 at implementing this program of action and provide joint multidisciplinary support to this municipality. And we intend to engage other role players, similarly, Chairperson, so that we can have all hands on deck and take a partnership approach in supporting this municipality. And the intention is to, while some of the work has started, uh, to go full blown into implementation mode uh, from the 1st of September and hopefully uh, march towards the elections with uh, some good progress that will be made uh, in turning around the state of affairs of this municipality. So Jefferson, that is our presentation and it's really uh, for the committee to note the progress that has been made uh, to provide support to this municipality, uh, but also to note that there is indeed a partnership approach between ourselves, provincial COCTA and treasury uh, towards providing support to this municipality. And that is our presentation, Jefferson. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Joanne. Uh, can we then allow the municipality to comment? Councillor Foss. Uh, thank, thank you, Honorable Chairperson. And let me also take the opportunity uh, to to observe all the protocols. Uh, uh, let me uh, appreciate the, the committee, our MECs in the province, MEC in Vokon, MEC in Nata, our colleagues and the uh, uh, association Saga and its leadership uh, for the opportunity again. I think in most of the most of the challenges has been raised through the Saga uh, presentation. We did also uh, prepare the presentation, Chairperson. Uh, I am not sure whether you would want us to do that presentation, but I think in broadly, Saga has already raised the challenges 
which we are facing. Much of it, much of the other surrounding issues are not necessarily within the presentation. You will recall the last time when I appeared here uh, before, uh, before the committee, uh, I know the people, the members of your committee were very demoralized after the presentation uh, so much that there wasn't many questions to ask because I did sketch the situation we, we came to inherit when we went into Payas Nodia. Uh, uh, with your permission, Chairperson, if you allow, uh, we do have a presentation, but I wouldn't want us to, to, to repeat what has already been mentioned. I know you have said in your opening remarks, Chair, uh, uh, we, are, uh, we may have moved to, to a qualified audit, and that is not an acceptable standard. We fully agree with you. We are not, we were, we, uh, I was saying the other, the last week when we also presented uh, at another platform in relation to payers. Ours is not to defend anything which is being said by the AG. Instead, we are prepared and ready to deal with the issues which have been raised by the Auditor General in its report. I only would like to, uh, except for, for the amalgamation process, I think it needs to be re-emphasized. What was the other area surrounding the municipality which have which are not covered in actual presentations. And I want to repeat them here so that we have a broad picture of just understanding the environment even at the, at the establishment which we were inheriting. When we were inaugurated and this municipality established, Ikwezi was at a total collapse. I think I need to emphasize that. Ikwezi was totally collapsed and Bavians was under a service delivery lockdown. There was no services delivered. The, 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 all the, the plant and equipment were locked up, sewage were running in the street, no leadership at administrative level. And, and, and it, was, it was just a total collapse of governance when we inherited. Those were the instabilities under which we were also inaugurated in 2016. In Ikwezi, three months before the elections and so on, the salaries of that institute, of, of the staff there, has already been paid for three months by the district municipality. That, that were the conditions under which we went into this new municipality. Uh, two collapsed many institutions, a total uh, lack of, 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 of labor relations were totally absent. And that the senior staff in some of these municipalities were nowhere. They did not have top management in some of these municipalities. So those were the other surrounding conditions under which we went into this municipality, except for the issues raised by, by last week's presentation. So, so I, I don't want to use that as justification for the areas which have been raised uh, in, 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 in the AG's report, but, but it, it is just to re-emphasize uh, at, what, at what level we started and the efforts we have tried to put in notwithstanding those, those, the, 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 those areas where we, we could have done better in relation to, to implement. I know MEC Mboko have always said uh, uh, COPRA should, should take responsibility for not having ensured that this process have been done more properly and so on. I, I know, I'm not sure, percent what we do have a presentation as, as well as the action plan in relation to the audit outcomes. Uh, I'm not sure whether you would want us to make that presentation uh, if with your permission. Then I would really want to ask uh, my officials to, to, to put it up. Let me also use the opportunity to congratulate our former president and the deputy minister. I think we did do that through our own channels, but I think it's just a privilege to do it on this platform also. So, so we fully agree with the presentation of Saga and we want to thank them for coming down to us and engage with us directly and to, 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 to and we highlight and we make presentations to them. We, we did submit you a comprehensive uh, documents, uh, honorable chairperson, which we forwarded to your, to, your, to your good officers through the administration. In those documents, which we submitted to yourselves, there is a state of the municipality report, which we have forwarded to yourselves. 
also the 2021-22 MTERF uh, adopted budget assessment report we have forwarded to your to your offices. We also forwarded the audit action plan for the 2019 on the 2019-2020 audit outcomes. And then uh, the municipal uh, the engagement with SALGA, which have now been presented by, by, by uh, Mr. Jewel, the committee. I, I would not want to, to proceed without your permission on whether we, we should put up a presentation or the action plan on the audit outcome, uh, if you would allow that, uh, Chairperson. Thank you. I would like you to deal with the action plan, but in short, because the matters as raised by uh, Lance still remain the same. And then colleagues, can I also remind you that uh, DCOC, Eastern Cook, Cape Cookta and Provincial Treasury, they send us their presentations and they were included in the presentation of 1st June. You recall, it's only Dr. Ned Bayas Nodi that we didn't deal with. But when they were there at the time, I asked them not to touch on the Bayas Nodi matters, if we recall collectively. So I think then DCOC, Eastern Cape, uh, Cocta, and Eastern Cape Provincial Treasury will now zoom out on those things out of their presentation for the 1st of June when we're dealing with all the municipalities in the Sarah Batman. Uh, and then under the circumstances as the mayor has requested, then maybe let me allow Eastern Cape Cocktail first to zoom in on those issues, then followed by provincial treasury, then DCOC, then we'll decide as the time progress whether the team from Dr. Nod Bayers may be a uh, present on their audit action plans, but those matters are not meant for us. As long as we have the plan, what we can emphasize is that, uh, Mayor DeVos, you must make sure that those plans are not just paper that gets folded and put in couples. Uh, they need to be implemented so that when we come in the, in the end of the financial year, because if you do implement those things, then your audit outcome is going to improve. What is exciting, having listened to both uh, the, the MECs for COCTA and Treasury, they've taken a posture and a view that they need to have a hands-on support on this municipality, which we appreciate colleagues. So basically that's it then. I'll allow uh, HOD Fanny, if you are ready to zoom in on those matters of, um, yeah. Of, of Dr. Bayas Nodi, and then the same thing, provincial treasury will do the same. Then uh, GDG Temba Fusi will deal with the matters as well. Uh, I'll request a uh, secretary to again send those presentations to the colleagues if they are not at their disposal so that they can also be able to look at that. So basically, is it over to you, HOD Fani? Uh, thank you very much, Honorable uh, uh, Chair, and uh, good morning to all uh, MECs, the uh, Deputy Ministers, and uh, Honorable Members. Can I ask the Chair with your permission, Acting DDG Charity, to proceed with the presentation? It's okay. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you. Good morning, uh, Chairperson. I just want to show my face there. <laughs> um, okay. Can you see yes. me, Honorable Chaperson? Yes, yes, I Good can morning. see. Okay. Good morning, Honorable Chaperson. Uh, can I close it now? Yes, you can proceed. Okay. Thanks, ma'am. Sure. Uh, Honorable Chairperson, in respect of the presentation for Dr. Bias Nodie, uh, we will just uh, zoom into matters that are related to the support that the department uh, has given to the municipality. If you can allow, because the presentation is basically uh, uh, contains matters that were presented earlier on. I want to share the screen now. 
Give me a moment. Okay. Is it visible, Honorable uh, Chairperson? No, not yet. It's here. Yeah, you're busy loading now. There we go. Sure. Okay. Proceed. Thanks, ma'am. Um, in light of the fact that there's a presentation that was made by Salga and uh, the content is very much uh, closer to what we have presented, I'll just go into the last slides where we are indicating the support that we have given to the municipality. <clears throat> Suffice to say, uh, Honorable Chairperson, on the, on the matters related to political and governance issues, the stability is there in the municipality. And also in relation to institutional matters, the Section 57 managers and all HR matters are being attended to by the municipality. And the uh, provincial treasurer might want to touch on financial issues, also, in respect of service delivery, we've made an indication on the how the municipality is performing in respect to to take a loan, but to give hands and support in areas where they are needed, and also your NPI. So, it Dr. Beas Nodier is one of the municipalities that we have supported in terms of the application to make sure that um, it gets a package that will be assisted on. Then in terms of Ipeas Nodia, there were 10 applications that were made by the municipality to the to the to the committee of NPI, the department, and also DPSA. There were 10 projects, and five of the projects were since uh, assessed as a department, and uh, they've been approved. Those projects are projects related to electricity electrical infrastructure master plan that the municipality is gonna be uh, supported on, your water and sanitation master plan, your local spatial development framework, human settlement sector plan, your land audit uh, in areas, town, in town and urban areas. Uh, out of the 10 projects, five were approved and then the other five were not approved. Um, they fall out of the scope of the partnership that we're having with UTBSA and NPI. And then in respect of uh, the hands-on support, we are saying we've analyzed the financial management for nine municipalities and Dr. Beas Nodier has been included and will be offered a support in respect of revenue management, your SCM, your asset management, and your records management. These are the issues that when we're looking at the generally at the AG's report and the issues that were raised by AG that were making these municipalities to be qualified. One key issue is the issue of e records management. So therefore we've decided that uh, let us elevate certain municipalities that will be the first ones to benefit from this kind of support. So there were some documentation that had to be submitted for us to assess and also to recommend for the support. Uh, we are happy to say Dr. Beas Nodia is one of those municipalities that have submitted the required in, uh, information. And then a draft capacity program has been developed that will include action learning or training group coaching, uh, implementation of the action plans, monitoring, and uh, there will be visits that will be done. All of this that is reflected in the far right column is the work that is going to be done in respect to those aspects that I've highlighted above the, the revenue management, your SCM support, your asset management, and records management. So Dr. Bears Nodier, uh, Honorable Chairperson and members of the committee is going to be benefiting from that hands-on support. We will be even having warm bodies that will be deployed there, seconded there, to assist the municipality, take them hand by hand, hand to hand, and in coaching and in supporting in all those areas and 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 yeah, and also the projects that I've highlighted uh, I've highlighted above. It's basically that uh, honorable chairperson which we wanted to to raise as cocktail as a support to the municipality thank you honorable chairperson thank you so much as sister charity MC Mvoko, i was not given the name of an official maybe then yeah it's MC Mvoko. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, Chair. I was not given the name of the officials, unlike the Cocta officials that are always with us now. You know, I even know them now. Hey. With the 
presentation? It will be done by DDG Nadolo, who is in the meeting. Okay, thank you, MEC. Charity, uh, can you remove uh, your presentation so that uh, DDG Nadolo can proceed? Remove your presentation, Charity, from the screen. Uh, good morning, Chairperson. Uh, the honorable members, the MECs Bulele, and the DGM. Bulelo, can we see you, DDG, please? We want to see you. <laughs> we do. There we go. Can you see me now? Yes. yes. Thank you, Chairperson. Good morning, Chairperson, the honorable members, both from the portfolio committee, from the executive and the MECs. Uh, I'm here as a, as, as a DTG responsible for municipal financial governance and provincial treasury. Uh, I'm here, there's the HOD is here with the HOD Macheke. I'm here with the, Mr. Kuija, who is the director responsible for the Sara Bartman district from a provincial treasury. I'm here with Mr. Nchengila, who is also a director responsible at head office and also the deputy directors uh, at, uh, at uh, Sarah Bartman. Chairperson, Mr. Kuija, go straight to the area of support for, because we presented the overall uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, in terms of the, of the, just go to Dr. Bayer's support only. Uh, Chairperson, this is, Dr., this is what we prepared uh, everything else is covered by both Salka and uh, and and Charit and Mrs. Sungunu as well, working as a multidisciplinary team in the province. We have got an MOU on which we, we 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 work on when we deal with municipalities to avoid one going there today and the other one the other day, so that we don't create a confusion to municipalities. With the taxpayers and honourable chairperson, the budget for them is unfunded. But every support, because of the uh, issues that have been raised uh, in, uh, that are inherited, we have worked with the municipality trying to work to assist them towards a funded budget. The issues uh, uh, that result in that unfunded budget are more towards e an, e e e inability to raise e revenue. So we've he helped them to develop a turnaround plan that, will, that they need to implement because in most cases, Municipalities will develop that ten, that budget turnaround plan just to get equitable share, and and, and, that, and 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 it's not being implemented. We are going to assist them in hands on in terms of implementing it, and also reporting on a monthly basis to national treasury for them to, to be able to get the equitable share at the, at, 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 in, in in December. So we we've, we've done a, a workshop on M score so that they can capture their data strings. On the, on the local government database at National Treasury. We provided monthly feedback reports in terms of our analysis of the Section 71 reports on the performance and quality of reports that uh, where we have identified some gaps. Uh, also, we have, uh, 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 we have got e engagements at a CFO level and trained the BTO in a coordinated approach to the district uh, as, uh, through the district champions. Also, as Treasury, we are serving in the IT support because our interest is to address the irregular expenditure that is there at the municipality. Some of it inherited as the, as the, as the executive mayor indicated earlier on. So we support to assist municipality to, in terms of analysis and investigation of the high irregular expenditure and also the significant write-offs of the irregular expenditure. What is picked up the honorable chairperson? Uh, we try to assist in municipalities through EMPEX and the DC board to do e investigation. It, it, it must not be about the right off. There must be an investigation and then consequent management, which is what in most municipalities is, is, is not working. We have had e -ses e sessions with the EMPEX and the DC board. Uh, one of the sessions was, I think, on the 10th of April, where we're running a workshop. The next one is going to be on the 5th of September because we want to see we've got a target of the clearing of these irregular expenditures. So we support, uh, we, we do support to also to, to Dr. Bayas around that, around that. We also support them in terms of training on SCM and risk management uh, 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 to, to, to make sure that uh, we also participate 
in the forums where the, the, the treasurer will be facilitating those sessions. We also assist municipality in terms of the development of a financial recovery plan, to working together as, a, as this multidisciplinary team because we want to see that there is a, 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 an a, a engagement at that level. Also, we support the municipality in terms of now a, a, of a developing an agreeable and manageable a, a, a repayment plan to the ESCOM debt and other creditors. What we had a session with Cogta and, and, and Treasurer last week uh, to deal with the repayment of the debts uh, 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 and also the affordability of the repayment plans by the municipalities with ESCOM. Uh, what we do is to do analysis of their budget and see and the, and the cash flow to see how they are, they can afford rather than being imposed to pay a certain certain amount with 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 ESCOM and other creditors. Also, we assisted the municipality to be where, where, where it is. The, 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 the executive mayor always does recognize that support that we do as a treasurer. Otherwise, everything else, chairperson, is covered for the sake of time by the by the presentation by both Cogta and, uh, and, uh, and 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 uh, and 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 Salga as we work together as a team. Uh, uh, thank you, chairperson. Thank you so much, DG Buleno. Then can we go direct to DDG Fossi from DCOC? Th thank you, uh, Honorable Chairperson. And uh, good morning to all the honorable members of the committee, the MECs, uh, and our Deputy Minister. Uh, congratulations and welcome, uh, Deputy Minister, uh, and, and the leadership uh, of, of Salga. Uh, honorable Chair, uh, I, I'm not going to, to flight the presentation, just to, to raise a few issues which, which uh, in support uh, of of the presentation that has been made uh, by by Salga and the uh, provincial court and, uh, and 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 provincial treasurer. That's firstly an issue, chair, which, which uh, I know that the committee has been seized with uh, the concerns that have been raised around the uh, issues of uh, redetermination of, of of municipal boundaries. I think it's the appropriate time to, to actually use uh, a Bayer's note here as a case study that must inform the, the whole sort of process, uh, review of the whole process around the redetermination of municipal boundaries uh, to an extent that uh, those discussions must begin to look at the issues of criteria, uh, to look at the issue of uh, the, the support uh, to ensure that uh, these municipalities after the, the, the pronouncement or proclamations, we have clear plans uh, of how we, we're going to make them more sustainable uh, going forward. Uh, and I think the, the, the matters of BIAS have been articulated very well in terms of the challenges. Uh, and and uh, that's why I'm saying we, it, we need to think of it as, as a case study which can then begin to, 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 to focus uh, on, on the overall review. The, the only matter, Chair, from our side, over and above the support that uh, COCTA is providing in terms of the MISA teams that are working uh, with the, the municipalities in the district uh, and the funding that we're providing on the upgrading of roads, uh, CWP support in terms of recruitment uh, uh, and managing uh, participants. We, we, we are working with the province now to ensure that uh, all this support that is provided is located within the, the district development model. Because the matters of Bears No Tears cannot be resolved by Bears No Tears alone. It requires all of government uh, uh, to, to provide the support in the context of the work that must be done in the district the relationship of, of the district uh, and the support that district is providing to its locals uh, and, and the relationship with the other locals within that district. So the DDM provides then a, a sort of a, a framework which within which uh, we can ensure that uh, all other sectors from national, uh, provincial can have clear commitments on how overall we're going to be driving uh, development uh, in, the, in this district. 
my colleagues uh, chair from MISA are also here. I'm not sure if they want to add, but uh, we'll continue to work uh, with, with Salga, with the province uh, to ensure that uh, there's one sort of uh, plan that, that deals with the development of, uh, of, of the district and all its locals. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you, uh, DDG Fossi. I think we need to just go straight to members having received all this presentation because the only critical presentation that was remaining was the Salga one. And we want to also appreciate the work that you have done, Salga, in that regard. Indeed, when you said we must give you space and time, one is them excited to see the product that you have actually produced. We want to appreciate you for that. And the good work that the two colleagues, the two MECs that they are doing. I think then if we can start to infuse this district development model and maybe we pilot it in all, all these almagated municipalities, we are destined to see good results in terms of concerted effort and support to all these municipalities. Because what was also a worrying factor is when this amalgamation are done and then the, the resources don't follow the function because that was the other issue here. Yeah. The monies that were provided was on a sliding scale and then that money got exhausted in only dealing with the HR issues because also the structures were different. And there's no way that these municipalities were going to downgrade officials that were earning more in another municipality. And then when that such happens, officials who are on the inheriting municipality will also demand equal pay because they are doing the same job. And then that money in most areas, it got depleted only on salaries and that is not even sustainable because in other areas, other municipalities are forced to return to workers. So I should think we need to learn lessons out of this as well. But let me allow colleagues who wants to talk on these matters to raise their hands. For now, I'm only seeing the hand of Honorable Mkalipi will be followed by Honorable Cornevald. The other colleagues, Honorable Brink and um, Honorable Spice, are currently attending their caucus meeting. I hope they will find this us here when they come back. But nevertheless, and then three hands that's far. It will be Honorable Mkalipi, Honorable Cornevald, followed by Honorable in that order. Over to you, Honorable Mkalipi. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Hey, Chairperson, the, oh, let me change my, my video. <laughs> I, I know that all of you here, Chair, you are fighters, <laughs> but let us, um, where is the background now? But we, we must respect the decorum of the house. Yeah, here we go, Chair. Thanks very yes. much. It looked like hey, Dr. Beas Nodier's problems are many, Chair. You know, <clears throat> when I <clears throat> look at the presentation by the COO of Sanga, I was taken aback by this Alma Commission processes, Chairperson. And I will think that we need to get more clarity in terms of uh, the preparation for MDB processes that will embark on the post elections to redetermine the municipal boundaries. So I think that the COO must clarify this. What he meant by this slide here is he saying that this thing of amalgamation didn't work for Dr. Spears Nodier. I'm saying this chair because I'm sure in all presentation, it's also been stipulated that. Um, one of the reasons why this municipality is having such problems is because they also inherited uh, some of the debt from former municipalities and is a lot of money. So therefore, I remember we had this discussion at a portfolio committee with other municipalities saying that it looked like when 
uh, municipalities are amalgamated, uh, it does not yield exactly a um, result that are uh, uh, pursued that it will be yield. So I just want to get a clarity from my COO of Salga. And also, Chair, last time when we speak, uh, but with Sarah Patnan as a whole, the issue of water is, is a problem. Even in Bears Nodier, the issue of water, I think in one of the areas, as last time I indicated that one of my ground forces and the speaker of the district wanted to know what, is, what, what do I mean by ground forces. One of my ground forces told me that in Stateville, in Dr. Bears Nodier, a, the issue of water, it's a really problem and it's affecting them big time. He's, she's telling me that at some point, uh, the water is only available in early hours and the whole day, the community stay without water. Maybe it will come back very late. So it's a problem. And here in one of the presentation, there is something that suggests that um, it, the, the, the doc, Dr. Piaz no, Notia was declared as... Um, a drought area. So I just want to get from the province and from the national and from Salga, how do they, how do they deal with this uh, challenge of being declared as a, a drought, as Dr. Piazno did? And uh, this uh, ESCOM area that's Chaperson, that is also uh, a reflect on the presentation of Salga. Uh, if we can be told, how do they intend to address it? One six one million, it's it's, it's a very uh, worrisome, and also Salga is telling us that they have uh, this uh, municipality is having forty one active cases of litigation, and eleven uh, is likely to have a financial implications. Uh, as a result, one point eight million has been uh, identified, and um, uh, I. In other presentation, I can't remember if the municipality presentation, they also talks about uh, 79 million related to former equity uh, was recommended at the council to be written off. Uh, when I was listening to Usis Bulelo, uh, also talking about unfunded uh, budgets that the municipality is also fun uh, functioning with, it also brings a crisis chain. And now I begin to understand that you, that's why people from that um, municipality are saying that no, there's nothing that is positive that you are gaining from this municipality. And I can understand if they operate with unfunded budget. And I also want to get a clarity from Moses Bulelo when he's saying that uh, they are trying uh, to resolve that matter in that regard. As a result, um, they have plans as a department to assist them. If you can also unpack what types of plans, how are they uh, intended to get out of this uh, quagmire situation sort of uh, in this municipality? And she is also saying that uh, because we wanted to also to know, uh, because in the presentation, they also mentioned that there are consequence management because we also check as in, we can't just have a blanket approach on all these issues as much as we understand it. That, it's look like there are some more challenges in King Azakona that are too much, but also have to get a clarity if there are consequences management. And it's at some point they are saying that there's an MPEC who is uh, much uh, at work, but um, they are also recommending that some of the monies must be written off and uh, it will be processed, of course, uh, after the MPEC is agreed, but there is no time frame that is attached. And um, uh, the DC boards, because this Bulelo is also alluding to that fact that they're also part and parcel of the DC boards. Can we get a clarification on that one? It must not just be a generalization of statement so we can have a sense of what is happening in this municipality. Thank you very much, Chair. I'll just pause there for now. Thank you, Honorable Mkalipi. Can I give this platform to Honorable Honevant? Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Chairperson, um, I, we did go through the reports. So there's just a few things, and uh, Honorable Mkalipi also touched on some of them. 
Um, in terms of the cost relation to contractors and consultations that amounted to 6.2 million, and yet the municipality have a uh, budget that is unfunded. Can the municipality then explain what did the consultants do in terms of getting their finances correct, or was that 6.2 million a waste? Then they also have a security cost of 6.2 or um, yeah, 6.2 million. If they can clarify um, what that amount can I say entails um, for their security. Then in terms of Directorate of Infrastructure and the one report that we've got, it says that water is sourced from uh, the farm one whip. Is there a service level agreement in place with the farm? Um, and they say in the report that they experience challenges. What challenges do they experience? Because they do not allude to say what is the problems. And then in terms of your budgetary control and management, it says officials are not being held accountable for UIF and W. Um, how many cases has been opened by the SAPS and what is the progress on them? I think the MM can allude us to that because it's his responsibility. And then on three, it says service delivery not always done efficiently, effectively, economically, at the required quality, quantity and the right time. Service delivery is the core of any municipality and prescribed by the constitution. Therefore, they admit that they do not comply with the constitution. People is the most important part of service delivery, chairperson, as the people is the ones that implement um, all the plans that is being discussed. So with no delivery of um, not delivering services also has an effect on economic growth locally that have an effect on job creation on its turn. How are they going to motivate their staff to be more productive and, the, uh, and implement all the master plans that has been drafted? Um, we've listened to all the presentation, all of the presentation says that there is master plans being developed um, and so forth, but it doesn't help you have a plan and you cannot implement it because the people working for you is not um, willing to do so. Then on communication and client services, firstly, you say that limited customer care, high frustration levels, restricted capacity, staff not multi-skilled, telephones and correspondence inquiries seldom answered, no feedback um, on complaints, time delays in attending to complaints, building not conducive to customer care, orientation, service delivery, and departments and sections are working in silos. Chairperson, in terms of that, um, your, uh, your uh, Systems Act says that you have to have a mechanism for communication with the community. And I think that's a big part, um, and especially in this committee, I always go to uh, section two of the Systems Act, where it says that the municipality consists of three parts. The first part is the people working in the municipality. The second part is the politicians within the municipality. And the third part is the community and they have to work together um, to make a successful municipality. So in terms of that chairperson, I want to know from the municipality, how are they gonna, can I say, come off, get out to the community so they can get also involved in the business of the municipality if they cannot even have, they stated itself, telephones and correspondence inquiries seldom answered. So chairperson, in terms of that, I think um, that's a big part of a municipality communicating with your communities. I want to know from them, how are they gonna rectify it? And, and if they can give us timeframes. Chairperson, I'll pause there. Um, I'll maybe come back later. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much, Honorable Cornevant. Honorable Keza. Well, thank you very much for giving us uh, uh, an opportunity to, to speak on the presentations. Uh, one, uh, I want to to ask on the legal cost uh, if there were preventative methods as the as the municipality uh, taken in, in in ensuring that public money is not spent on legal fees uh, but focus on on services. Uh, secondly, chair, I will, I will, I will I want to ask about the failure of this of this particular case of amalgamation as to what then is the is the way forward in terms of, of, of taking action for 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 for, for liability uh, 
of this particular amalgamation because this is a failed uh, uh, amalgamation project. Uh, uh, perhaps the M MDP could come and, and, and tell us uh, what were the basis of the amalgamation. And the, I know that in my little knowledge, uh, the amalgamation is to create special conditions for sustainable development and transformation of local communities through municipal and what and what boundary demarcation services and serve as a knowledge hub for stakeholders to promote social economic development uh, access the capacity of municipality to, to to perform their functions and and it, it does not seem it does not come true that the this has served to, to actually complete that mandate, Chairperson. And uh, then, then Chairperson, I, I, on, on the 65.3 million uh, creditors that debt owed to ESCOM, Salka, and the Auditor General, uh, I, I would like to ask as to how much is owed to these municipalities by, by businesses and, and, and government departments, which would enable then the municipality to pay its its debts because because we're, we're, one, we're often told about the problem, but we're not told as to how to come out of the problem. I uh, would like to know as to how much is 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 owed to municipality by those uh, uh, entities, Chairperson. And then Chairperson, uh, they speak about drought affecting the availability of water to the communities, um, water services, infrastructure grant, and and funding for for drought purposes to refurbish the existing and build and build new water treatment works as well as to drill boreholes. How many of these boreholes? There's 303 million that was allocated. Uh, how many of these boreholes were drilled and, uh, and what is the status of that? And then, Chairperson, uh, you know that in, in Section 152.1D of the Constitution, the municipalities are responsible for, for the well-being of, for the, for the health, the well-being of health in the, in the municipality to promote safe, safe and, and, health, and healthy environment. And what have they done to, to improve the water quality? And perhaps uh, I would ask uh, 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 Misa as to, uh, in terms of vandalism that has been raised by, by Salga, uh, what, is the, what is the action that they've, they've taken to mitigate this situation, uh, this, this this situation, which results in 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 some shortfalls in terms of the provision of quality water to to the people, uh, and then Chairperson, in terms of uh, 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 back and forth here, uh, in terms of of the impact uh, on the municipal representation. They say they have 79 million related to, to or 50 million uh, referred to, 79 million related to equity were investigated and recommended to council for a right of 50 million referred to inter internal audit to, to validate and, sub, uh, and, su and submitted to MPEG for further investigation and consideration. What are the findings of the impact in this regard, uh, together with the irregular expenditure? And who are the people that are held liable for this uh, irregular expenditure, uh, which is nothing else but corruption, Chairperson? Uh, what 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 consequence management in this regard? And uh, you are saying that COVID nineteen had an immediate impact on the ability of the municipality to maintain revenue levels. What other indications proves that uh, the, the revenue levels were best before the COVID-19 pandemic? Uh, and then you adopted a, 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 an unfunded budget. Uh, colleagues have, have, have alluded to that. I'm not going to repeat that. Um, what is the... Chairperson, if you if you read and understand the internal controls, uh, it says that the, the 
the implementation of the, uh, the the implementation of the preventive and detective controls assist with avoiding uh, detective errors and fraud in transaction with uh, with in transactions resulting in a more accurate financial reports and achievements and and management objectives uh, um, and then preventive controls are designed to avoid errors and fraud in transaction before they occur the preventing uh, to prevent invalid transaction from being processed and assess and 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 assets from being misappropriated uh, the, the example of the effective preventive control is the segregation of duties uh, the, the the responsibilities of the authorizing transaction uh, recording transaction reviewing transaction and maintaining custody of the asset should all be performed by different individuals what is the state of the of the municipality in terms of those preventive the, the, the all those controls uh, the, the state of of, of 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 the municipalities in that and then uh, chairperson Lastly, I, 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 I'm tempted to really ask about uh, the, the, the spatial development of the municipality, uh, whether it seeks to, in the development of housing, perhaps this question I can, I can, I can, I can take it to the provincial uh, the MSC, to then in the, in the development of housing and the infrastructure in place and the, 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 the facilities that are that are of, of, of crucial need in, in within communities the recreation centers and so forth uh, 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 what local de economic development uh, strategies have you put in place in this municipality to then allow uh, for 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 the for the for 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 for, for the improvement of of of, of job opportunities uh, and 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 the, the the improvement of revenue collection uh, in the municipalities while while um, while industrialization is in place. Uh, I think I'll pause there, Chairperson, for now. Thanks. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Tleza. Those are the hands that I have. Can we ask the teams to respond to the issues as raised by the honorable members? Maybe let's allow the municipality to be the one that starts. Then it will be followed by Salga. Then if there's anything that, uh, then, then a uh, cocktail both uh, provincially and nationally, and then it's gonna be treasured in that order. There were direct questions, uh, Honorable Foss. Thank, thank you, Honorable Chairperson. And let me appreciate the questions. I will, I, will, I, will, I will respond to some questions and then refer to the officials, some of the, the others which I may not have touched. Let me let me open in response to say the uh, the only beneficiaries of this amalgamation, according to my own uh, analysis, is creditors and employees because uh, they were the main people who benefited since the municipality has only been uh, focusing on paying creditors, and we must understand that two of these municipalities were Grade One municipalities, and they had to to be paid now on a grade three municipality by the, by the, the cost, or rather the, the, there were no increase in revenue, uh, uh, mainly. That is the, the one thing. On the issue of consequence management, I, 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 I am of the view and I raise it in council and the council agree, it should not just be a slogan uh, uh, that the consequent managers, but it should be actual uh, consequences. When we started the uh, Honorable uh, Chairperson, with this municipality. Uh, there was no, the labor relations were at a total collapse. Uh, there, there, were, there, there were no directors. There was never a director in any of these municipalities for corporate services. 
There were no qualified HR manager in all three of these municipalities. So, so, so labor was at a total down. So the question becomes relevant in motivating labor. Uh, in, for, for when we came in, we, we have appointed such staff to, to deal with the issues of labor. But we also, at the very onset, appointed a forensic uh, investigator on our own as a municipality to investigate some, some things which we suspected were irregular, uh, which were happening. And from that investigation, a report was submitted to our council uh, with recommendations, which we implemented. And many of the, some of those people who were implicated in that report are not with the municipality anymore. And the rest of the document was given to the Hawks. The Hawks are in still investigating some of the issues which came from, from that investigation. Uh, uh, and and, and uh, we are also with the internal disciplinary processes dealing with, with some of the recommendations still in, 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 the, in, the, in the municipality. I must just say also, we appointed directors at the beginning, but we have dealt with two because you can appoint on the basis of interviews and all the criteria. But when it comes to extra performance within the institution, then you, are, you, will, be, you will get disappointed. So as we appointed some directors, we have got rid of those who have not been performing. And we have got rid of two directors which were appointed, but then they could, the, the, after some time we find that ah, they are not helping us. So we get rid of them. It is one area where we, where we have been seriously uh, uh, emphasizing the issue that there must be real consequences. Unfortunately, in some of the areas, uh, uh, we have been unable to enforce that. If you, because if you look around, most of some of the things which we are dealing with are coming from the previous municipalities. And some of, in, in most, in some of those people, those people are not within the institution or we can't find the documentation to deal with whoever is still around, especially the, the majority of the irregular expenditure. I don't want to shift things. They may, they, they may also have, they, they have happened some of this within our, our time since we started, but the majority of the irregular and, and expenditure and unauthorized is coming from, 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 from the previous municipalities. But as you know, the AG don't start from a clean slate. We had to deal with all those those areas, and most of of the the, 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 the investigations are in relation to some of the, the irregular expenditures which we have inherited. That does not mean they are not which has occurred within the time of amalgamation. The other major challenge we are also facing in terms of this, our uh, revenue collection. We nearly have a, a more than four settlements which are directly supplied by ESCOM within our areas. And in those areas, we find it difficult to implement our cre uh, credit control policies, which is a serious uh, challenge. Uh, we, have, we, have, we, have, we, have, we have started to pay down. We have reduced the pension, the pensions uh, from about 26 million. We are now at 11 million and we intend to, to bring the pension funds up to date of the employees. We have a number of turnaround strategies as one of the members were saying, we have, we have a lot of plans in place, but to implement those plans also need funding to implement the plans. So, so I think our focus should be shifting now from, from, from generating plans, instead how to implement those plans and what's needed to, to implement the plans. Yes, indeed, the, the service delivery is our main function. One of the members of the committee have talked about service delivery. We are trying our best to deliver as best with the capacity and the resources we have uh, within the institution. Water is indeed the biggest challenge. This drought has been with us since 2014. Uh, our whole municipality is totally, as vast as it is, it's totally dependent on Balls now. The Nueva Demofravine has been was at a point dry to a level where you could play cricket in the in the dam. Uh, the, it then came up to about 16% uh, and went down again. We are solely dependent on bowl water within the whole of the municipality. That 
28,000 square kilometers we have informed you about. And if we don't get rain, even the poles can dry up. So we are rationing, it's true uh, what the ground forces are saying. We are rationing in some of the areas. For example, where I am staying, it is for the past four to five years that we are being rationed. You get water a certain time of the day and in the evenings, it is totally off and then we are in the mornings. It is for the past four to five years it's happening. And in state level, which the, the member is referring to, we have to start rationing even in the state level area because the water from the source, which is coming from the water levels has also gone down. So, so, so the issue of drought and the impact it has on the, on the water availability is a serious matter. Uh, which has been raised through the Saga report. And we do get support. We have been uh, supported by the Department of Water Affairs and Copta within the province uh, in terms of, of ensuring that we do get water. We do have trucks with which we have been supported with, water tankers. But do you know, if you know the, the kilometers travel, now you must, you must travel the water, take water from the closest source which you have and transported to the other source, which is also a very costly exercise. But, but the water is, is not something you can attach cost to when people are thirsty, they need water. So for example, we had to transport water uh, to state level. The member has been raising because of the challenges within the area uh, and so on. So from where you transport water, you must also know that's also coming from Paul from Willowmo, which we are already rationing. So the issue of dry is a real challenge and, 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 and with the balls uh, and the members are correct. It is, some, it is a very serious matter uh, on the issue. So without notwithstanding the, the challenges, we are trying our best to deliver services uh, under the, the challenging circumstances. Uh, I will leave the ESCOM uh, dead for the, for the officials to respond to. Yes, indeed, the unfunded budget. We have been working with, with, with Treasury in the province, uh, Mr. Quija. The, the Treasury in the, the province is really supporting us. They are one of the departments which are continuously uh, uh, with Bayes not here in assisting. Uh, the plan was, the budget was adopted with a plan and forwarded. So it is indeed a, 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 a challenge, as you, as you can see from the presentations. I will leave the MPEC and, the, and the, the DC boards because MPEC is really trying. Uh, we are trying to capacitate it uh, and to support it because sometimes you do have some challenges with the necessary support towards the committee with documentation and so on, but it is being addressed. The one thing which I can, can proudly say, uh, we have, we have, we have been dependent previously on consultants uh, for, for assisting us with our financial statements and everything. Those last uh, submissions were done internally without the support of, of, of consultants. Our own internal staff drafted our financial statements and submitted them. And this, it is that, that, that internal capacity which has brought us to a point where we have an, a, a qualified audit, which are not something to celebrate. Uh, now it is an improvement, but we would we would want to go beyond that and get an unqualified audit uh, with our internal capacity because uh, we have spent uh, there has been money spent on consultants to assist us, but the outcomes were still uh, <coughs> disclaimers. But with our own staff, we have went from disclaimer to to a uh, qualification. The, the 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 security cost will be explained by that with CFO. Vanwop is a private farm for the information of the committee. Vanwop is a private farm with a private owner. The former Pavians have been having long battles with this uh, private owner because the water from of, of one of our towns, which is Willow, where I am, I, 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 I am, is coming about over 40 kilometers out of time. That water is coming from, from fountains there on that farm. And the farmer has been really difficult. In some, in some cases, he didn't even want to allow our municipal staff into, into the farm. Uh, so there was a lot of legal challenges and so on. We have tried to, to, to engage with him since we, uh, we, we, we established this municipality. 
but there's still some outstanding issues with the farmer in relation to to signing of some documents, but the lawyers are engaged with the, with, with the farmer. The motivation of staff indeed, as I was saying, when we started in this municipality, labor relations were at a total collapse. We, we, we entered when everyone was fighting, uh, tires were burning, uh, uh, protest was a daily occurrence. And, uh, and uh, there has been progress now, there is some point where there's engagements through the labor forum, uh, notwithstanding the other challenges. And uh, the appointment of, 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 of senior staff have also assisted in creating uh, stability and engagement with labor. I'm not saying it's perfect, but indeed we had, uh, the, the labor relations was, was totally uh, uh, non-existent in the, the municipality. Communications. Uh, this is an area we need to improve. We have established an app. Uh, we, we have established an internal and municipal rapid response team uh, where when people submit complaints, we are trying to deal with matters. Uh, we, do, we also do get acknowledgement from the public uh, on, on, on issues which we deal with, especially now with the storm winds and, and uh, which are happening, which happened in Hrafrenet and so on. But I'm not saying it's perfect, our communication, uh, we need to improve it. But however, I need to inform the, the committee, the vastness of this area and the, the, the mountainous areas and the ruralness, our reception is very poor. Uh, it, is, it is, in fact, it is appreciated that there was no interrupters now uh, with, with, with the reception of, 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 of of uh, uh, digital uh, in our area. <clears throat> so we, we have a vast area and uh, we, we do have challenges with reception in our municipal areas it, because of its vastness and the mountainous. The debt owed to the municipality, the, the CFO will raise and the quality of water, I will leave it to them. <clears throat> Infrastructure, housing, uh, uh, we are, we. The infrastructure is, I must say, uh, is, is, is we, are, we, are, we are living in old towns. Krafrinet is one of the oldest towns in the country. And the infrastructure was mainly at the time developed for a few. But now all, the, all, all our communities are still, we have to benefit from that infrastructure, which is dilapidated. We try with the limited resources we are receiving to, to upgrade where we can through the MIG, but it's not enough. The, 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 it's collapsing some of it. That's why you will find there's some, a lot of some blockages sometimes and some water interruptions because of, of the bursting of pipes. But our staff and our, uh, our employees are trying their best. However, the challenges, we do not have the cash flow readily available when the infrastructure is finalized or something is happening immediately like a pipe burst. For example, a number of things have blocked for the past week, but, but we are trying under the circumstances. The revenue collection, as you can see of over, will respond to that. And uh, those which I've left out, the, the, I'll give over to the MM and they respond to those things. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson. MPEG Chair, can you respond to the question that uh, Councillor DeVos said you're going to respond to? You can don't do that. We are in a meeting. We can't hear your private conversation here. Can the MPEG chair respond to the questions as raised? You Thank must you keep morning, uh, Thank you, Honorable uh, Jefferson. Good morning. All protocol observed. And uh, on the question raised by one of the committee members, let me let me straight go to the uh, to the uh, 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 the amounts uh, being mentioned, uh, especially of the last uh, council meeting. 
So you are all good, the four of you to infect each other there because it's only one person who's wearing a mask. So you are all well and good. You can continue to infect each other and your leaders. What message are you sending to society? My well, uh, I'm just apologies, Chairperson. Let me let me proceed then with the with the uh, with the uh, response to the question that uh, the report that was presented to Council the other day on 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 the issue of irregular expenditure that the amount of hundred and thirty million five hundred and nineteen thousand nine hundred uh, around irregular expenditure. And that was for the period 2013-14 to June 2017, we reduced with an amount of 40 million, 26,721 rand, which no more constitute irregular expenditure, as sufficient documents were found following investigation of MPEG. Then the remainder of the amount of 10 million, 345,000. 416 uh, uh, around for the 2016-17 financial year be written off following the explanation by the internal order and also the CFO. That the amount of 79 million, that's the bulk of, 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 of the question uh, raised by the honorable uh, uh, member, that the amount of 79 million 28,780 run irregular expenditure transpiring from the 130 million irregular expenditure for the period 2013-14 to June 2017 from the former Equesi local municipality of which cannot be accounted for be written off as no documents can be found. Maybe Jay, if, I, if, I, if, if you will allow me, allow me just to pause there. Three teams were sent to Equesi to investigate as to where the documents could be found. Unfortunately, that, that, that all three uh, uh, exercises were futile uh, because no, no documents uh, uh, could be found. But, I, but it also need, uh, uh, need to, be, to be mentioned, uh, uh, Jefferson, that MPEC can, can state it unequivocally <clears throat> that the municipality in terms of, 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 of that specific amount, there was value for money and no losses were suffered by the municipality. And it is because of these reasons that uh, MPAC made uh, the recommendation to council that this specific amount be written off. And then the chairperson that the amount of 28 million 532,000 irregular expenditure for the financial year 2017 18 and 2018 19 financial years investigated by internal order as per their report dated 22nd of April 2021 also be written off. And then there are the remainder of the amount of 27 million further be investigated by internal order with report back to MPEC. Were well, that Jefferson, there's still a batch, there's still a batch of, of fruitful and wasteful expenditure also under investigation by internal order. And I hope really that uh, uh, with our next meeting, that that specific, that specific uh, two items will be uh, attended to and, 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 and be concluded. Uh, as, I've read, uh, as I've already mentioned, Chair, that nobody can be held responsible. But we also need to check, Chair, because that was also a concern of MPEC, the issue of credible systems. Credible systems were put in place by management to prevent further irregular expenditure in future. And I've already indicated that the batch of food and wasteful expenditure are still under investigation with the internal audit team. If need be, and if need to, we will most definitely request assistance from provincial treasury. We also uh, 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 were very fortunate 
to be assisted by perverted treasury. I think that was for the uh, uh, that was in uh, late 2018 and early 2019. And we all, uh, uh, they assisted us also in terms of, 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 of these investigations. I thank you, uh, Chairperson. Thank you. Can the MM respond to the issues that it said uh, the official will respond to? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, for all protocol observed, there's a few issues uh, that we'll respond to in a pointed fashion. Firstly, Your we'll name again for the purpose of the record, uh, MM. is Eri Rankwana. I'm the MM for the Bayes Nodia local municipality. Uh, Chairperson, as I was um, um, saying, we'll be responding directly because we need to give direct responses in terms of issues raised. Firstly, the consultants, the direct infrastructure will just um, give clarity on the 6.2 million consultants issue uh, in terms of the, of the water project. Also on the balls that um, that were drilled. Um, the, in terms of the of the security costs, we need to point out. Um, Salga has already done so in the presentation. We have lots of vendors in our municipality, and like in any other instance, in terms of the MFMA, we have to appoint a security company that uh, as, that's assisting us to look after um, our um, equipment and to try and prevent the vandalism that's, that, that's taking place in our area. We're also going to just talk on the question of the legal costs. I need to point out, most of the legal costs emanates from things that happened in the former equation. We're still struggling to pay some of those issues and it comes up regularly, uh, Chairperson, um, to our municipality. Things are beginning to stabilize now and um, it's not as regular as we used to have it uh, in this municipality. Um, so the legal costs, we have got the preventative measures in place where we are now much more careful when it comes to dealing with any issue that may have a legal implication for us in this uh, municipality. In terms of taking action for liability, um, there's no official in this municipality, including myself, who will not bear the consequences of any action that's taken uh, that's causing liability to this municipality. So that, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll deal with, and we will we will make sure that we we sort that out. There was a question with regard to the revenue collection and how much is owed. I can point out that businesses in this area, as of today owes us 17.9 million. The residential areas and communities owes us 180 million. Government departments owes us 12.3 million. The farmers owes us 9.7 million. I'm just hasten to add that this is a new um, account with the uh, SS from the 1st of July. Okay. Can I continue, Chairperson? The quality of the water, the um, director will also address and just talk about, about that. Uh, the internal controls will be addressed by the acting CFO. Mr. Arms. Uh, good morning, Chair, all protocol observe. Uh, I'm Benny Arns, Director of Infrastructure Services. Chair, in terms of the 6.2 million that was raised, I can just indicate that we received 6.4 million from COPTA uh, for a drought relief project. And that project assisted us uh, in Dr. Bayesa Diaz, specifically Gravrenet, uh, with water provision. Uh, we encountered shortages, but when this project was implemented, it, it uh, alleviated some of the challenges that we had. In terms of the bowls, Chair, uh, the 303 million that's been mentioned. Uh, it's probably WISAG and also our big money. Uh, from that project, uh, 38 balls were 
implemented, including a reservoir that was constructed for additional storage capacity. I must also highlight to the committee that the neighbor dam was empty. And as a result, the balls in the area have assisted us. And we really need to thank Water Affairs for helping us, as well as Copta and Sarah Bartman District Municipality. So in terms of water quality, we are sampling the water on a monthly basis, and we also submit our reports to the standing committees of infrastructure as well as to council. Uh, as a result, some of the water quality will be affected because of low recharge and low rainfall, but it is still within the parameters of science 241. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Uh, all senior members of parliament, I want to call for the call to vote on mayors, present, and uh, politicians and municipal managers to you. With regard to internal control, we received assistance from provincial treasury in terms of uh, uh, advisor from national treasury, which was in our employ or with us, working with us for 24 months. The result of the support uh, is evident in terms of the improvement of the last audit outcome. Obviously, during the testing of an audit, we sent the external audits and we we'll test what has happened throughout the financial year. So the impact of the standard operating procedures and internal control that's been put in place uh, was only effective for a portion of the 20, uh, 2019 uh, 20 financial year. Therefore, we are of the view that uh, we may have a much better outcome in terms of our internal controls for this financial year. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Tim Bayas Nodi. Can we hand over then to Salga? Salga. Hello. Yes, proceed. Oh, thank, you. thank you very much, Chair. Um, as, as, as we said earlier on, we, we really appreciate the opportunity to give an, a given to us. We still need to see you. Yeah? We still need to see you. You still need to see me. Okay, yeah, let me try these things of Bundus. Let me try these things of Bundus to uh, find me. I don't know how. I don't know how. Uh, no? We thought you were better off. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm saying uh, let's once again appreciate the opportunity given to us as an association. And in, in, indeed, we really appreciate this. And uh, we could have not been here where we are now if it was not the joint efforts made by the Department of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs and Treasurer in the Eastern Cape uh, to deal with matters that affect that municipality. But also, of course, um, divorce for him to accept to be thrown into the lion's dam and swim for himself and try to find solutions on the difficulties that were not created by him, created by the policy perspective insofar as the direction the country wished at that time to follow and uh, believing that putting one plus one is going to be two and not understanding that it can also, also be depending on where the one is put next to the other one and that can be level. So the difficulties that uh, divorce is facing there and any other municipality that has been amalgamated with no support of whatsoever, uh, both financially and making sure that the leadership in the municipality is able to render service uh, to the community. It's a cause for concern and really we really appreciate um, the commitment made by the provincial COCTA of uh, trying to relook into these amalgamated municipalities and challenges that are faced by these municipalities so that we design a, a different approach going into the future. Uh, unfortunately, is divorce now accounting about that, but the persons that have taken decisions of putting two graves together and hope that there will be life, they are not accountable and they are nowhere to be found. 
and they can't explain why the allocation was not um, uh, sent to that municipality, which it was a transformation grant that was supposed to be allocated to that municipality according to the plan and request that they've made. However, I must say, Chair, it has become very clear uh, that the, the, the case of putting graves together without true, uh, following a true thought processes, it has been shown very clearly in the Dr. Bersnot year. That is a case that uh, we need to rethink and relook on how do we then position ourselves going into the future, expecting municipalities to render service to communities, expecting individuals that are deployed there to account on their action. Uh, it will be important to minimize uh, mistakes that we create for them, which are not necessary mistakes, uh, ultimately to oversee and instruments that do not have resources whatsoever and make sure that that in, uh, institution do account, do make sure that service is rendered without any stoppage or without any hindrance. So I think to us is a, is a better lesson uh, today. And we committed ourselves, uh, we will continue engaging on this matter with the provincial government, uh, COCTA in that area and then and the provincial treasurer uh, with an intention to find a solution uh, on the difficulties that that municipality is facing not out of their own choice. Of course, uh, in the course of work, uh, there will be weaknesses that you will be seeing here and there, and we must better deal with those weaknesses. And that is why we appreciate uh, the Department of Cooperative Governance and, and Treasury in that province to lend a hand in supporting uh, that municipality and all other municipalities that are faced uh, by this difficulty. Chair, the other issue probably, it might be an issue that resembles as the poor service and no water in that municipality. Uh, probably it's important that at some point, not today, uh, fortunately you are the lawmakers uh, going into the future that you need to ponder around and ask critical, difficult question to yourselves that what is the value for establishing water boards? as a conduit in between the two spheres or three spheres of government that had a legislative and legal responsibility to render service. Isn't then a better way of dealing with this? So you can see it, uh, it Dr. Bears not here, and many other municipalities throughout the country, that there is a competition of responsibility in providing what it should be provided by uh, the communities. Isn't it then a better time to relook on these issues so that you better reposition the governance as a whole, generally both at local, provincial, and national government, so that it's better responding to challenges? Because my understanding is that if you have a third man in between or run in between in the process, that run in between must make money out of his or her role, irrespective is a minimal or is a very serious role that the run in between is, is making. It is important that as we relook into the policies going into the future to reposition and repurpose uh, local government to be a sphere of government that is closest to the people as, as already announced by constitution and be supported by all, uh, all efforts in making sure that its success is therefore a success of a government as a whole and its failures is a failures of government as a whole and use the intergovernmental relations uh, framework in making sure that the government have ability to have a conversation, interact amongst itself, resolve challenges that are faced by our communities. And in, in, so, in so saying, Chair, we really appreciate the committee uh, engaging us as an activist community, community that we have ever come across with, uh, interacting with challenges that are faced by member municipalities and communities in our in our country, in, indeed, is a, is a is a is a is a matter that we really appreciate as an association. I think Lance is going to speak on matters of ESCOM and other related questions. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, Councillor Stofile. See, over to you. 
Well, well, thank you very much, um, Jefferson, and also to members for the questions that were, were duly posed. Um, I will limit my response to the ESCOM-related question. And, uh, and, uh, and the question that was posed is uh, within the context of the 161 million owed to ESCOM, what are the plans to settle those uh, debts? Well, Chairperson, when we when we had the benefit of engaging with the municipality, and and that being an honest reflection, uh, it appeared at the time that the municipality was uh, improving on its collection rate uh, as a starting point. But secondly, when we also reflected on the instances where the municipality had to enter into settlement agreements with ESCOM, they were doing so uh, with a gun next to their heads and were forced to enter into arrangements that were clearly unsustainable. Um, so, so what we are suggesting should be done, uh, it is the obvious. It is in order to, which is acknowledged, to settle the debt owed to ESCOM, uh, on a sustainable manner, it would be affordability assessment is done. That will then say, based on the current challenges experienced by the municipality and its financial constraints, vis-a-vis -vis what it is generating uh, from a collections point of view on a monthly basis, what is the most feasible amount that could be in addition to paying the current account of ESCOM what could be paid in addition there to on a monthly basis to ESCOM? That is one, affordable, two would be sustainable in the long term, meaning that ESCOM would have a bit more certainty around what it would have received both on the current account, but also uh, based on the outstanding debts owed to it from this municipality. So that exercise must be conducted so that we, we indeed come up with a settlement arrangement that would suit both parties, would be more sustainable and would be less uh, um, negatively impacted by this difficulty that the municipality was in the past always asked at a point of there being disconnections to pay a certain amount. They agreed to that, knowing that they would not be able to sustain those payments. So the idea is really to be have a sustainable, uh, affordable um, uh, payment arrangement and settle the debts duly uh, with, ESCOM, uh, with ESCOM. Obviously, we do acknowledge, as was indicated by the department, that uh, indeed COCTA specifically has come on board and assisted this municipality. In those instances where they were having their, their, their heads uh, with a gun next to it, or their backs against the wall, uh, in those instances, came on board and assisted them. Uh, and that is appreciated, but we're looking at a long-term rather than a short-term uh, solution. Uh, thank you very much, Jeff. Okay. Does the officials, either the HOD and DDG in Copta, want to say something? I have my hand up, uh, Chair, um, when, when, when time allows. It's so noble, Kaka from the Eastern Cape. Okay. No, thanks. Uh, a... th you know, thanks. Uh... Repeat the other word the others have said, you no, know, because I'm pressed for time. Don't repeat yourself, no? but proceed, PDO. <laughs> Thanks, Honorable Chair, and uh, good, 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 good morning, I, I guys. The rest of... Okay. Uh, good, good, good morning to the rest of the leadership uh, um, in the meeting. I, I thought um, I should, uh, in addition to what uh, Honorable Stoffel and uh, colleague has, has raised, um, um, just pinpoint some of the things that, in 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 our opinion, are, are pending which require the committee to really apply its mind. One of them being the fact that as a recommendation of uh, the local government week that we, we, we periodically convened with the NSOP and National Assembly, 
um, it would it would be necessary, in my opinion, to to revisit um, the the approach we take in terms of analysis of Section Seven One reports. And I'm raising this uh, primarily um, 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 in respect of how we should approach a demarcation process going forward. Uh, because one of the, the issues that are, are necessary for the committee to reflect on is the fact that this municipality is part of the municipalities that have evolved from having a what was called a DMA, uh, plenary municipalities. And now we're sitting with both DMA and the other municipalities being abolished. But the reality is that uh, the actual physical space of that municipality necessitates a, a more substantive analysis of uh, the area before it becomes determined as a new entity. Because one of the things that uh, are inevitable impacts of uh, redemarcation in all municipalities is the fact that you would have a municipality that is relatively stable. And as soon as a new entity is established, it becomes, uh, it, it reverses back to uh, the establishment phase. Um, and, and as such, um, um, the suggestion that I really would like to, to pitch to the committee is that uh, there should be a requirement for a, 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 a demarcation process to introduce a baseline analysis of uh, each of the municipalities to be uh, brought together into one entity. And that would assist us in terms of um, saying, what is the current state of finances of that municipality? What are the implications insofar as um, the cost to some of the unavoidable implications uh, of um, uh, redemarcation, some of which include uh, human resources? Um, uh, for instance, uh, you have had two municipalities whose personnel had had to be leapfrogged from being paid at uh, grade one to grade three, which is what uh, the mayor has uh, already uh, intimated. And that's not only a case of salary. It also has implications uh, insofar as the number of employees you will have, the role each employee will have, the pensions and all other benefits that uh, uh, municipal employees qualify for. So we really want uh, to, to impress upon the committee to, to make time to have a strategic reflection on what should be in the pre redetermination redetermination or demarcation process, uh, uh, which must be a sufficient basis uh, for uh, determination of a, municipal, uh, a new municipality. Among such elements would be, to what extent will a new municipality impact on the quality of democracy? For instance, how likely are future ward councillors in the new municipality going to be able to service uh, the redetermined uh, in terms of words. And how is that uh, new determination going to impact on the ability of citizens to access their municipality? The situation in uh, Bayasnote really requires that uh, the committee must reflect on that. It would have been useful for us to get a sense as to what was the analysis of the Section 71 reports um, uh, of the, the actual financial years where missing millions are being uh, raised by the municipality. Um, and that would, in our view, form the baseline for any kind of uh, investigation. I do want to remind the committee um, that uh, there's a resolution that uh, was taken um, from our recommendation that perhaps it would be useful to have more eyes looking at Section 71 reports than, 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 than Treasurer. And therefore, um, the committee should really reflect on um, um, that, uh, that, that aspect. And lastly, um, it cannot be that... Uh, we, 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 we having agreed, because I have not had anybody uh, disagreeing with our view that we had uh, flawed assumptions in so far as uh, the, the local government white paper in relation to the ability of municipalities to, to, to generate revenue. And the, and, the, and, the, and the actual capacity of the base, the revenue base to provide uh, the projected revenue by each municipality um, and, 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 and ignore all of, all of those elements and assume that the municipality will be able to generate sufficient revenue insofar as um, a, a future sustainability is concerned. So I just wanted to raise those, uh, those, those elements Chair, as elements that perhaps, um, because this is uh, only a, a, a demarcated, um, a pilot uh, case, uh, and we're hoping to implement the same model across municipalities in providing support 
it would be useful for the committee to, 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 to reflect on those elements so that we are in a position to, to operate with in mind and understanding as to what are the views of the committee in terms of these elements. And there's a whole host of other things, uh, Honorable Chair, that we can talk about, including exposure to litigation. We knew that as a country we had health as one space that uh, the legal fraternity saw as an opportunity. We have a similar situation in local government, and I hope the committee will apl al apl apply its mind on those um, realities. It's not only personal, uh, it's across the sector that lawyers seem to have identified the sector as one possible uh, uh, area where they can make easy money. Thank you, sir. Thank you, PDO. <laughs> Indeed, you have thrown a food for thought. These are the matters that we definitely have to carry forward. I asked the HOD with our C charity if there are issues that they want to raise before I allow the, but the political heads, I'll give them time at the end. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Honorable Chair. Just to say, Honorable Chair, we, we really did try um, our level best in terms of assisting in terms of drought, but we believe that that's an interim measure. Uh, but what we have done uh, was to have a, 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 an approach where we pull in national treasury. We also uh, 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 pull in the, because the problems of Nelson Mandela of drought does have an effect at uh, Sarah Bartman. Then when we pull them in to discuss as to what do we do uh, for, for, for the challenges of Nelson Mandela, we also said we cannot isolate Sarah Bartman in concentrating at, uh, at the challenges faced by uh, that municipality, those municipalities through drought. But the difficulty that we had earlier on was the classification of that area uh, of Nelson Mandela, which would be inclusive of Sarah Bartman as a, as, a, as a disaster area. But I think in three weeks ago, we managed to succeed in, in, in talking to the National Disaster Management Center to begin to look at that with an eye of a, 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 a disaster area. That classification then was, was done and we will be looking whether we cannot enforce the broadening of that kind of a classification. But I think that uh, uh, in terms of uh, trying to do uh, our level best, I think it has been indicated, and I'm saying this thing, Chair, that uh, we're doing whatever we can try to do with the limited resources we're having, understanding fully well that uh, uh, providing for an interim relief for a challenge of drought will not help us, hence we are pursuing this route of having and ever last a longing solution because as well uh, investors are threatening to leave that area of Nelson Mandela inclusive of Sarah Batman if we don't do hard in making sure that uh, the issue of water is attended. Otherwise, uh, thank you very much, Chair. Okay. HOD Finance and our civil law, anything you want to comment on? Uh, Thank you very much, Chairperson. HOD will come uh, if I've missed anything. Chairperson, uh, I'll respond to the question that was asked by the Honorable, I think, Honorable Mkali, around the funding, unfunded budget, a, 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 a reflection on the municipality. Yes, Chairperson, under normal circumstances, the budget of the municipality is supposed to be informed by the revenue collected, and the indication is normally that the, the revenue will be overstated and expenditure understated. But we assisted the municipality to develop a credible funding plan, which we can share with the committee, we can email to the committee, which covers areas that the municipality would, uh, has indicated to say, they are currently their revenue collection is at 78%, and they, they, they are committed to collect around 95%, and informed by the following issues, Chairperson. Uh, the municipality has, uh, uh, has uh, established a qualified debt collector, and they have, the, the key issue in municipalities across the country, but I'll talk about the Eastern Cape, out of the 21 billion owed by, 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 by owed to, to, to municipalities for services rendered, 16 billion in the Eastern Cape is household with your support, can be can be can be can be can be can be sourced to person uh, in terms of awareness campaigns and is it Dr. Bears is one of the victims as the MM was saying 118 is owed by residents in terms of their funding plan Chaperson they have identified 
3,000 top residents that are not paying, which they are going to focus on to, 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 to increase their revenue. We have looked at it. They've got a deadline of the 31st of August to have issued letters uh, uh, to those. Also, they have, with the support of DBSA, as, as, as the executive mayor has indicated, they have got an enhancement, a, a revenue enhancement strategy to DBSA. Also, Chairperson, they have identified some parcels of land that they are going to, to, to sell. Uh, and already they, they, they have issued the advert on that. That will that is going to assist them. Chairperson, with the issue of ESCOM, uh, 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 I think it was the, uh, sorry, I'm sure whether I missed, Mr. Craig, that was talking about the analysis of the budget of municipalities, whether they can afford it, because ESCOM has a, got a tendency of imposing a repayment plan to municipalities, even if they cannot afford. Also, thinking that the municipalities are subsidizing the, 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 their operational expenditure through what has been paid by e house, e households or e e beneficiaries, which is not the case. We tried to explain to them last week, and they've give, we, we asked them to give us a list of top uh, 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 municipalities that are owing them. We're going to do analysis of the, 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 the budget and the affordability for they can impose so that we can say, the municipality that we think they can pay this amount cannot afford. Here's the situation. We structure now together with culture and, and Salga a repayment plan that is affordable by the municipality. The other thing that, have, that they're looking at is to address the issue here, the electricity losses and water losses, Chairperson. Uh, and the, the MM, the executive mayor has talked about the, the, the aging uh, infrastructure, which they are busy revamping, is going to uh, uh, come directly the, 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 the losses. Uh, or reduce uh, the electricity losses. Also, Chairperson, uh, 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 the, 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 the amalgamation, a challenge of incorporating those employees that were uh, uh, that were in those institutions, in, 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 in institutions. What one of one of the issues that they are going to address in the plan is to review the organogram structure that is going to be fit for peoples, and they are looking at. Uh, 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 reducing it by 25 percent, but that one we said it's not going to be. It's going to be a sort of a long term because it involves employees. Also, the chairperson they have reduced it over time. Uh, it is in the in the budget, and we are monitoring uh, uh, effective from end of this month, uh, end of August, because we need to also report uh, uh, to national Trail on the implementation. Because they normally have these plans, but what is key? That's why that we, we put it. We said they must put. It time frames to them. Uh, also, there was an issue raised around the the, 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 the role of MPEX in terms of addressing and to support in terms of irregular expenditures. What we were saying is, much as those uh, uh, irregular expenditures have been written off, there must be a process, a consequent management. Yes, they, they have responded to MPEX chair about it, those that were that were at EQZ, where you cannot get it documents, but it cannot be the same right through. It's what now we're trying to, the DC board is trying to assist them on. But unfortunately, because of the COVID-19, the DC board couldn't sit regularly as expected. But I've seen a letter, because we're making a follow-up, we've seen a letter of the chairperson inviting mem members to sit, to sit, to look at those now that have been written off. Thank you very much. Uh, 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 the, 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 also, the issue of ESCOM, the, the court case, was serving in the arbitration that is trying to solve the issue as a, 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 of, of ESCOM and the, and the municipality, in which they are expecting about 8 million through the wheeling agreement. Thank you, Chairperson. Is the HOD still wanting to say something? HOD? Or she cover, you are covered by the DDG? Is the HOD still on this meeting? I personally can see him on the list. Okay. He is in the list, Chairperson, at, at, at the Lushanga, at iPad, but I'm going to check there, just below charity. Yeah. So why is he quiet? You're closer to each other in terms of the, then we'll have to skip him then. Your HOD is not speaking, I'll see Buleno. 
I don't know why. It, he's saying he has got a connection problem. Chairperson, I'm, I'm trying to, I've, I've just called him, but he's saying mm. it, it, I've covered everything, but he's saying he's got a connection problem now. Okay, it's fine. Thank you, Then did DG foresee? Did DG foresee? The Honorable Chair, thanks. Uh, I, th I think, uh, Chair, we, we are covered by, by the inputs and the responses by, by the colleagues. Thank you very much. Okay. Oh. Uh, can I allow the MEC of Finance to start? Then it will be followed by the MEC of Cogtra. Then we'll have to hear the Deputy Minister in that order, because there are also issues that the PDO of Salga has raised that are very critical and crucial that I think they need your political intervention. MEC Finance. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Um, the, the challenges uh, of BS Nodia will take a long time to be resolved as a result of what was um, reported here by Salga, uh, Cocta, and, and, and uh, both uh, provincial departments. Uh, one of the reasons that they see will still be in this problem is because there are municipalities that has got a very low revenue base um, the poverty stricken area, and they have a lot of debts from the uh, previous uh, local municipalities. But what is encouraging is to hear that they have, uh, uh, I mean, their governance structures are in place. That is very encouraging. But what I would want, I would also want to let on the on the collection chair. I know that many municipalities would submit. Um, a, 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 a claims for departments uh, not paying. And as provincial treasury, we, we follow on, on, on all of that for, for many municipalities within the province to encourage them to, to, to pay. We have been charged with that task and we do follow up. But I would, I would want to request them to make sure that they provide uh, the breakdown that is needed, mostly because a municipality will say to you, we owe 20 million, we've got experiences. When you go and analyze, you find you owe them three million. Uh, but uh, if they uh, still encounter that situation, they must write to Treasury about it and would, would, would attempt to, to assist. Uh, of importance is that we, we need to continue uh, with the support that is given to this municipality for it to turn up, to turn, to turn the corner. And, and I think the assistance of this portfolio uh, committee uh, chairperson is also of importance because the report that we will generate out of this will be, we will be able to motivate for further support uh, for this municipality. The, the mayor mentioned in a matter that I thought I should just raise before I conclude about a water challenge with a farmer. My understanding is that all minerals and all water in this country uh, uh, belongs to the state. The state is the custodian of that. So if there are issues of this nature, they need uh, to uh, get in touch with the department um, that deals with water, uh, Department of Water. I don't know what is it now called. It used to be water and sanitation, the Department of Water. They need to um, um, uh, get in touch with them so that uh, they, they, they don't, do not enter into an agreement with the farmer at, at the end that will be costly to them when the department that deals with water could have actually assisted them. Uh, and lastly, I think we need to commend the improvement in the audit outcomes because judging by what we see, how the municipality started, uh, there is an indication that it, there is a light at the end of the tunnel, but they just need to ensure that uh, they, they tie the loose end to make sure that they graduate. I have not heard about the district municipality's support, uh, Honorable Chairperson. I might have missed it. But I think uh, one of the missing links here is how the district municipality is assisting the municipality to turn the corner. I am not saying they are not. Maybe they were just omitted in making a presentation. And if they, if they are, I think they need to get closer to the municipality to assist because we do not... We do not foresee that the challenges that they have now will be resolved uh, very, uh, very soon. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson. Yes, you, you have raised a very valid point. Uh, let me see. They will submit that to us in writing. At least the mayor is here of the district. 
we'll have to get that report that says what is it that they are doing to support this local municipality. And it must be done in writing. MEC Ngata, over to you. Uh, thank you, uh, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members. I think uh, with the HODs and the uh, DDG Forc and uh, and other comments, including the MEC, I think that uh, I, I am covered. Um, and uh, just to express my appreciation, and I think that um, um, uh, our collaboration has underlined uh, the correctness uh, of the approach uh, of government in terms of the dis uh, the district development model approach. Uh, of uh, collaboration and integration. And I think that uh, as we deal with these problems uh, facing municipalities and uh, trying to turn around uh, the, the, the Bayasno Day municipality, uh, we must just intensify for us to read uh, in a one page, ensuring that we collaborate, uh, uh, use the little resources that we have more effectively and efficiently. And I'm quite confident uh, that um, uh, however difficult uh, the task, uh, you know, seem to be, but uh, with collective effort, uh, with the um, uh, uh, oversight role and support of the committee, hopefully uh, the committee can uh, uh, secure more resources, um, you know, uh, for COCTA and, uh, uh, you know, to, to do this kind of uh, support that is uh, uh, so much uh, required. Thanks very much, uh, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members. Thank you. DM similar name. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair. I want to put you on the spot in that <laughs> new position. You've had uh, your former colleague, Sonavil, raising issue around the white paper. Mm. Can we hear from the brand new DM? <laughs> now that you are from there. What is it that the, the department is going to also do to make sure that this 1998 white paper, white paper. gets reviewed and revised? It's true, Chair. I think uh, 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 it, it may be that the DG4C might have not articulated on it. The process in terms of, I mean, I had a meeting with the DG as well yesterday, which is one of the areas where she was able to touch on on how we could move forward to accelerate the issues of not only the white paper review, but quite a bit. I mean, for example, your, your property rates act review also needs to be done. It's just that you can't do everything at the same time. You need manageable chance. But we, with regard to the case in question today, we also may want to assist the municipality with the financial reform strategy of how sustainably may they be assisted to continue. I mean, uh, uh, Pile was uh, uh, making notes on our chat uh, box here, indicating, for example, the issue of level one versus level three payments. This is going to be a permanent problem. So if the municipality is not assisted to be able to cover up uh, in a sustainable manner, it means such debt will, will be persistent. Uh, uh, a report I know has been sent to, 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 to pay us not yet so that there could be an interaction coming from uh, the side of uh, PLA. And that's a starting point because we need to do this calculation. And honorable chair, it's not only in uh, 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 this amalgamation. In fact, all amalgamations are facing such types of problems. Of course, in terms of uh, uh, levels, uh, there could be differences. Some municipalities are able to, to absorb the costs uh, uh, putting more pressure on households, but they are able to 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 float and be above uh, the water. So the current uh, debt is one of the issues which um, uh, my colleague uh, uh, Mlungisi, I think, has raised as well. I I I think, Chair, we may have to relook on how we are assisting municipalities with regard to the payment of uh, uh, debts. I see no reason why we can't. As a, in a collaborative manner, why we can't at least collect the 90 day due date uh, to these municipalities? Yes, an old debt which needs uh, 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 to be cleaned, which needs to be verified, and all that. Yes, it could delay. But I don't see a reason why 
departments can't pay their current debt to municipalities as me and you pay our debts on a day-to-day -day basis or on a month-to-month -month, uh, basis. But also, I did not hear very much, which I think is our responsibility as COCTA now to assist the municipality to apply its credit policy, um, uh, management policy in terms of re revenue enhancement and review. Because if you don't collect it and you don't make the department feel the pain, they're not going to pay. It, it's, it's, it's proven they're not going to pay. You sit in that forum for a long time. This month, they say this debt is wrong. You go and cleanse it. They say, no, we still have. They send different people into that committee. It never moves. It never moves. We have the SCOMPT one. It never moves as well. So we need to get to entice municipalities to begin to put their policies and collect, switch off the departments will come onto the table. I will not touch much on the audit plan, Chair. It has been touched on, but it is important that the collaborative effort, the district, uh, the MEC, ourselves, SALGA, assist the municipality to ensure that they live uh, by the audit plan. I've made a note uh, with regard to the water issues. Unfortunately, we're supposed to have a joint MINMEC this week, but because of the changes that is joint between water, a, a, a Department of Water and Sanitation and COPT. But Chair, I think this is one of the issues we will be able to raise myself and DG Force on behalf of the municipality so that they could be able to solve collectively all the water issues uh, that are a problem. I think the issue that has been raised by Sonoa with regard to how the municipality is trying to finalize and, and get themselves out of a problem without much assistance at a national level could also create much more problems uh, in future. Under administrative issues, Chair, we may have to review the amalgamation process in its entirety. And I think Bears Nodier uh, uh, is a very classical case of how we need to go back ourselves as COCTA Salga uh, and, and sit down with our, our partner, uh, the, uh, the, the, the MDP, uh, Municipal Demarcation Board, to ensure that we begin to have a process that will give an outcome that could be sustainable. As uh, Councillor Stofile said, someone amalgamate, but somebody else has got to be responsible uh, for answers on how uh, they need to take the municipality forward. And there has not been reviews uh, from the MDP in municipalities that they have uh, amalgamated, either in the 2016-10 or in the previous ones. And it does seem to look like we have more problems and difficulties in amalgamation. And we need to have to clear cut support strategies, which are aligned possibly to Section 154, as well as uh, what uh, Salga and other stakeholders could be able to do to assist municipalities that have been amalgamated, including uh, national and provincial treasuries, because quite a lot of such issues also have financial implications in them. I think that's where I will end, Chair, uh, on the three broad, four categories of the issues, but financial cooperation being one of what we need to champion and look into how we deal with the water issues as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. DM, uh, Mr. Ted Pillay, we know that you are seconded to Sunday's River. And like what you, the DM was saying on your chat group, you said you are going to give us a report on the support that you are providing to the locals. Yeah, because of the, the time constraint, you, you can send it to us latest by Tuesday. We're going to incorporate this on our on our report. I don't see any other end of the colleagues, or maybe they are waiting for me to call for follow-ups. Colleagues, oh, the hands have come back. They were waiting for me to do that. Uh, Honorable Fleza will begin, followed by Honorable Mukalipi, in that order. It's a woman's month, Chair. You can't start. 
<laughs> I'm the chairperson. You'll, you'll start on September. How? Oh. <laughs> Okay, yeah. Hold on, hold on, let's proceed. <laughs> yes. No, 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 we recognize uh, women and they are safe. That's why it's given an opportunity to ask last. Yes. <laughs> and we, we recognize them, their safety against us who are dogs, beating up women and, 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 and doing all sorts of verbal abuses to women and so, and so forth. Uh, Chairperson, I, I want to caution the municipality about the 2000 Millennium Summit, central to that summit uh, was the question of the eradication of poverty. And central to the eight, eight goals of that particular Millennium develop, uh, Development Goals is the question of water uh, uh, and central role, uh, the central role of water. It says that the central role of water in human and physical development and its intrinsic value in sanitation, health and poverty reduction was formally recognized in that. And those goals were said to have to have been uh, 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 achieved in 2015. What is the year now? And, and I think that we have to have a, a serious dialogue of, of how do we uh, 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 um, uh, deliver uh, quality water to people. And uh, there's a, there's a, there's, the, the municipality is, 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 is even closer to the sea. I've not heard them talking about new measures to, to, to exploit that. I, I, I have not, I've not heard anything uh, towards apart from the immediate measures, which are, which are fine. Always to talk, we, we will always talk about the 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 the, 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 the water tankers in this committee. In this committee, I do not know for how long. Uh, what is the sustainable solution to this drought issue? It seems like we are hitting the wall every time we talk about this issue and then we are wishy-washy and we, we don't have a sustainable solution. And it's a problem because we have a responsibility to adhere to what the constitution is saying in section, in the objects of, 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 uh, of, the, of, of local government, section 152D, all sections there. So, so, so I, I, I plead I, the, the, the the, 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 the municipality to just go back and, and deal with those issues and thus improvement of the delivery of these services to, the, to their people. Otherwise, they, there is no reason for them to exist or any other municipality. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, Chairperson, I'm going to ask you Thank you very much, you. Chair. Thanks, Chair. Happy Women's Month, Chairperson. Yes, uh, we are all <laughs> uh, Chair, I just want to suggest some few way forward in terms of the challenges that is faced by Dr. Beas Nodier. I welcome the input of the DM. Uh, it shows that uh, she has been in this field for the longest time. And what I have noticed as well is that uh, uh, the former DM Dao was also the president of Salga. And now our DM was the president of Salga, replacing a DM Dao. So Nia Landelana here, DM, you know, MEC Dao. So you are welcome. So I think, Chairperson, the first of all, we must have a short-term measures and long-term to address what is being uh, identified as difficulties in that municipality, the issue of water. In Salka's uh, presentation, they are specifying saying that one of the major challenges is the aging of infrastructure. So DM, if I was hearing you very correctly, to say that there was supposed to be a minimum meeting that was supposed to take place, but it has changed. So please look at this issue broadly 
because because it's not the only municipality which is Dr. Bears not there that is having such challenges. Chair, you'll attest and then agree with me and committee members that the issue of aging infrastructure is happening in the whole country. And it needs to be addressed because one failed to understand why all the municipalities will just wait until they have an infrastructure that is aging. It does not make sense. It does not make sense. And they have to wait. I don't know for whatever reason, but I suspect that one of the reasons is the corruption that is taking place in all municipalities. So it must be addressed, DM. It must be addressed. And the second one is that if there is a problem of shortage of water in this particular, particular municipality that you are dealing with, people must not suffer DM and the, the leadership of the municipality and the province. I think that one of the uh, proposals, we can also arrange water tanks and go and address that issue of, of water that people are uh, found themselves in when they, uh, they don't have water. As I was uh, earlier on saying that in, 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 in state, Stateville, people are saying that they are suffering the most. I don't know in other areas in, in Dr. Bias Nudi, but I think that we must also provide water tanks. I'm not sure if the municipality can also commit to uh, themselves to that one. The second one, Chair, I think we still have to proceed. We need to get, I think that is the DDG force who can also help in this regard to get a completely report of all municipalities who are saying that they are experiencing the aging infrastructure. And we must come and have a dedicated time to engage with that report from National and MESA to come and also talk to that effect of the aging infrastructure and what needs to be done. Because it's not only this municipality, it's happening in the whole country. And um, Councillor Stofiller was very correct to challenge us. We call ourselves as uh, legislators, but this thing of water pots, I remember Councillor Stofiller, I think, uh, I'm not if I'm not mistaken, Chair, uh, there is a court ruling in that regard about water pots. I think we need to invite um, or oh, the DM can engage with the new minister as well about these water pots because it also pose a challenge uh, as well. So I think, Chair, the issue of amalgamation, as the DM was also alluding to that fact, is not only Dr. Piasnodi. I think we need to get a clear as well, a clear report from uh, the municipal demarcation board, the chair. Uh, Babo Manioni must also tell us what is really happening. Why are we having this crisis everywhere? I know for a fact that this is not the first municipality that you are engaging with. And Salka have come very strong in that regard as well. Which one of the challenges that this uh, municipality, which is Dr. No, uh, Bias Nodier is also uh, uh, complaining is because of that arrangement. So we need to understand the work of the uh, municipal demarcation board uh, and how do you go forward to resolve this issue? There's only only one municipality when we met with KZN Chepesin. Uh, the municipality, I can't remember, but I think is uh, uh, in KZN, if I'm not mistaken, whereby the MEC of KZN said no. The only solution to this municipality is also to ensure that they also falls under that category of amalgamation. But the rest, the report that we received from Salga, from, from everyone, from Kokta, from the province, is that I, it seems as if it's not working out. So it needs to be addressed, DM, when you sit in that uh, strategic platform. And then um, um, the last one, Chair, I think the municipality have said that they don't get a proper support uh, from the district, which is Sarah Bartman, and from the province, uh, the province is, is, is also um, was uh, trying to, 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 to come to the fore, but they also stop their support to the municipality. Uh, they must not uh, suffocate alone. The, the, the crisis that they are funding themselves in, it needs all support from the provincial COCSTA, from the provincial, um, uh, from the district itself, and from the treasurer in the province. They must give them support because at the end of the day, they are going to blame you, saying that, no, we are just 
uh, 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 suffering here as this municipality. And if I was listening very correctly, um, I can't remember the, the comrade who was speaking here. Uh, the one that spoke very long time, Chair, and then you said, you know, he has spoken very well when you were saying that, you know, some of the problems of this municipality in Qatar, it's not on their own making. It's also is the, the problem that is emanating from Kebeha. So therefore, it needs the support from the provincial coxter to look at these issues. Uh, it's unfair that some of the things that uh, the Dr. Piers Notiers they are suffering from, it's also emanating from another municipality. It, so it means that it needs to be addressed in that regard, Chairperson. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, uh, Honorable Mkale. I should think uh, before I allow the colleagues to quickly wrap up because we we'll have to excuse the Salga team now at half past. I think Councillor Stefile has raised a very critical issue that we need to attend to seriously because in terms of the powers and functions, there are district municipalities and local municipalities who are water service authorities. And then I've done my own study and research on this matter. You find these water boards now, they seemingly taking this water service authority status of municipalities because my understanding was that water boards are supposed to be implementing agents for the Department of Water and Sanitation. But in some cases, you find that that roles and responsibility are overtaken. I don't know whether it is a consequence of also our colleagues in local municipalities who seem not to understand what is their role, or you allow them to do that because now they're playing the piper pays the tunes in the sense that you think then if you allow them to even overlap on their mandate, and maybe money will come. So I really don't know what is it, but I think that's a very critical point that we need to seriously deal with it. The other thing, the, the announcements by the demarcation board, but we must also recall that on this amalgamation, it's a pity most of the MECs that are currently sitting now, they inherited this. There's a place where in MECs in the province grant concurrence, and then, it's just that we don't have time. Maybe we could be able to recall all the, those MECs to see, but what was in your mind? What were, what were you thinking when you allow processes like this? Because if indeed we are preaching cooperative governance, there's no sphere of another, no sphere of government that can impose on another sphere to say, by hook or crook, we are forcing you to merge these three municipalities without looking at the consequences of that because the reality is these colleagues, we have, we have attended to all amalgamated uh, municipalities. The only thing that they can successfully tell you a story about is that they've managed maybe to deal with the issue of HRS at Councillor DeFoss was saying to say, there isn't much that we can say the people, the people on the ground, our constituencies have benefited out of this amalgamation. It's just the people who are in the structure. It's either it's uh, human resources that the others now, they are no longer from level one municipality. They are going to be level three paid. But at the end, because the other consequence of this amalgamation DM is that people who used to get services closer to them, now they are forced to travel in where I'm seated here in my region, there are areas since the amalgamation, they've never got services from the new entity. The other time I was even asking them MM of this new entity. He didn't know of certain areas that are within his area because of consequence of amalgamation. So if indeed you were to interview the people, they will tell you all of them. That's why now when you listen to the demarcation board, there's been a lot of people who have written back to say we want our municipalities back. So these are the consequences of our decisions that we sometimes take. But it be made as it be, 
I think I want to appreciate the hands on support the MECs, uh, MEC Mulungu Simvoko and MEC Toli Lengata that were providing to this municipality. So this is the matter that as you, you are proposing colleagues, uh, we need to call in back the demarcation board, call in the ministry DM Academy uh, to say then in future, instances of this will never happen, but nevertheless, is there anyone from Salga who want to say some quickly before something quickly before you leave, so that we can then allow the MSCs to finish up in the DM? The DM is also leaving to attend the same visit to the CEO's office. So, is there anyone of you who wants to leave to who wants to say anything before you leave? Yes, Councillor Stofile. No, no, no. Thank you very much, Chair. I hope I'm audible. Yes, you are. Okay. But Thank you very much, Chair. No. Being audible, we must see you as well. <laughs> um, you can see me now. Not yet. Uh, let me go to the card. card. Okay. Uh, what is okay. Hello, Chair. Not okay. yet. I'm not visible. Lance, what is happening here? Yes. 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 Uh, okay. yes. Yes. <laughs> it's good to get that from uh, make him blush, uh, man. <laughs> Chen, uh, I, I I think I fully agree. One one. Uh, uh, remove that tonight. finger of yours now. <clears throat> Just block you. The finger is the oh. end. Yeah, there oh. you go. So, mm. Okay. okay. Sit, sit uh, like that. I fully, I fully agree. <laughs> I fully agree, Chen, with the issue that says. We are where we are because of choices that were made and choices that were made. It was the choice of policy that has been made us to be where we are and have grave sites that are unable to service our people. It was the choice of a policy through legislative processes that made sure that uh, municipalities are put together. It is a point that we really said it is important for us to relook at it and really deal with it because it has never really served the purpose of uh, putting uh, these municipalities together with the hope that there will be a better service. I think your network is failing you. Switch off that video. Let's hear. Um, I'm, I'm okay now, sir. Your network is failing him completely. Okay. Yes. No, thank you very much. Sir. No, no, I'm, I'm saying I'm, I appreciate that. We yes, wish as an association, we wish as an association to end a serious debate and discussions about how do we then go forward. Using the one debate that we had under the stewardship of uh, Honorable De former Deputy Minister Pax Dow, in the committee there was an understanding of creating and understanding what we understood of a cooperative government system in South Africa. What do we understand of this animal called cooperative government? I think we need to go back and relook into that. And yet we are also a little bit happy of what we are seeing in the Eastern Cape, uh, at different departments working together uh, and trying to uh, uh, provide service uh, in the municipal space. It's one area that we really appreciate. And secondly, we are looking forward uh, for further engagement on numerous matters that are facing local government uh, at large. That inclusive of water, uh, as an including looking into the water politics uh, of our country. After 20 years or 27 years of democracy, there are areas where there is no water whatsoever, but we are celebrating 27 years of our democracy, yet, uh, our instruments are not responsive to challenges that are faced by our people. Uh, the robbery that is taking place in the municipal infrastructure, 
uh, if you look into the municipal infrastructure that is used by uh, water boards through uh, the structures that they have uh, using the infrastructure of a municipality that they've never capitalized, they've never invested on it. Uh, it was taken over by uh, the, the, these services and there are no resources paid back to these municipalities, including uh, servitudes that are using, including the matters pertaining to ESCOM uh, insofar as electricity supplied to our communities. It is matters that we must seize every moment that we have to deal with challenges that we are facing so that we complement one another and move as a single government in rendering service to our people. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you. DM, can I excuse you? You want to say something before you leave? No, Chair, thank you very much. I can excuse the Salga team and then allow the two MECs to respond on the issues as we head towards the closure of this meeting. MEC Mulungi Simvoko, any other last words? Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, let me take the opportunity to appreciate um, uh, participating in this meeting and appreciate the efforts and by the portfolio committee to try and address some of the challenges that are faced by our municipalities. Perhaps my parting shot would be, I think if there are any further amalgamations in municipalities, uh, the a COCTA at national level should make should find a way of uh, making a deliberate effort to have an allocation to assist those amalgamated municipalities. Because the challenges they face uh, uh, after amalgamation mostly are financial and because of the what they have taken over in some of the smaller municipalities. So COCTA must after being consulted and before declaring uh, municipalities as amalgamated, also um, make sure that when they budget, they put a, they have an allocation that is going to assist the municipalities, uh, you know, to to address some of the challenges they make. Other than that, thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you, MEC. MEC Naka. Yeah, thank you, Honorable Chair. And let me appreciate as well the opportunity. Just uh, two points. Uh, to underline uh, and express my support on is uh, the whole issue of re-looking at uh, the amalgamated municipalities. It's quite important for us as COCTA to do that because uh, the problems might be structural uh, such that no matter how many resources you pump in, you cannot turn around that institution. It needs to be reconstituted as a different entity altogether. So re-looking at amalgamated municipalities is a very important thing. Um, and then the second point, uh, which is my last point, is the whole issue of the funding model. The funding model of which only about 9% in terms of allocation go to local municipalities and to municipalities, and yet that's where the need uh, rise, uh, you know, uh, is. And therefore, we must really look at the issue of funding model uh, so that uh, we begin to, 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 to allocate resources accordingly as a country. Um, other than that, Honorable Chair, thanks very much. Uh, Thank you, MEC. I should say these matters are ongoing. Ted Pile is committed to give us the report on the support. And then the issue of Section 71 reports analysis, I think we need to, to look at that then we have agreed on the matters of the legislations that also need to be revisited. And then this is a matter that is ongoing that will still need to follow up on the progress that uh, collaboratively, like this is a classical example of where we said, maybe this is a time for us to then say, indeed this, this development model is working. I think I must, uh, express my gratitude uh, to the two colleagues, the two MECs from the province. Uh, throughout, whenever we call you to the meeting, you all come. And uh, it, your commitment in making sure that our municipalities in the province work 
It's one thing that we want to appreciate as a committee. Also to thank uh, the Salga team for always being available. Uh, and then we need to excuse you. You are still here, Lance. You said you're gonna leave 1218. We want to appreciate you that even during this difficult time when you are supposed to be supporting your colleague, you are here, you've prioritized the work of the committee. And then as I close, I still need to again confirm my colleagues who are in the meeting, Honorable Director, Peace, Mukalipi, Hurnevald, Kleza, Umdidaimis. Yes, as we close the meeting, those are the members that are here. And then I want to also thank you, colleagues. You know, at some point we stretch a lot, but you are always here available because here we've got the common objective to make sure that our municipalities work. I want to thank uh, the HOD for COCTA in the province and the team. Thank the HOD for finance in the province and the team. To thank you, DDG4C and the team, including your colleagues from MISA, for making yourself available. I believe we've got a sizable number of the official delegations in this meeting, which is much appreciated because it's evident that we have a collective effort to make sure that our municipalities work. Thank you so much, colleagues. The meeting gets adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mkalipi. Bye, Chair. So when are we voting for the speaker? On the 19th. On the 19th. Yeah, we are all going no, to Cape Town. Hmm? All of us. Yeah, everyone. On the 19th, we're all going to Cape Town. Yeah. We're privileged to have you in that committee. Now we know how to prepare ourselves. Yes, Chair. Hello, Skara. Hello, hello, Mama Faith. Good morning. Good Skara. Hello, Skara. All right. Good morning, Mama Faith. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What's wrong with the speaker? How are you? I'm the feeling a ground force. Recording stopped. No, she's a ground force. I didn't know uh, that. She's a ground force. A ground force. Ground force. Yes, yes. Doctor Pears, no dear. Yeah. No, don't give. Doctor. Doctor. Hmm.